It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therat is here. Mary Jo Foley's here. We're going to talk about xCloud. Paul's been playing Microsoft's new gaming streaming gaming service. He'll have a review. We'll also talk about what to expect at Ignite. And yes, new Windows updates. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therat and Mary Jo Foley, episode 643, recorded Wednesday, October 16th, 2019. XAML Islands, blah, blah, blah. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Zapier. Zapier connects all your business software and handles the work for you so you can focus on what matters most. Right now through November, go to zapier.com slash windows for your free 14-day trial. And by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. It's that easy. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash windows. And by Captera. Find the right tools to make an informed software decision for your business. Visit Captera's free website at captera.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we play with Windows every single week. And we work, work, <laughs> work. Windows. Sorry, did I say play? Here I introduce in the in the in the left corner wearing the red trunks, Mr. Paul Therat of Therat.com. Uh, on the right, see it, but there are no actual trunks. No, you're in a barren room. You're like yeah, but it's going to change because I'm I'm moving my desk around. Oh. I think I'm going to paint mm. here, do something different in the back. Are you at home? Yeah. Oh, where'd the brick final brick wall go? <laughs> Uh, we're not going to speak of that again, Leo. So let's. Uh, I think on. you should paint a mural behind it. <laughs> it's Mary Jo Foley. Paint a mural. It's gonna, I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint a brick wall on the. No, you should put Paul loves Linux behind. You. Oh, that would, could be like Excalibur and have like wallpaper that looks like brick, but it doesn't look anything like brick. Yeah. We have yeah. in the uh, main studio. Yeah, we used to have real brick at great expense, by the way, in the old studio. I mean, I yeah. learned my lesson. Um, our, our, our design. Oh, by the way, Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com. Hers, he didn't yes. have Now I'm going to talk. Uh, yes. our des we brought in a Hollywood set designer for that old studio. You may remember Roger Ambrose. And he was going to bring in at great expense plastic bricks, brick like sheet of plastic bricks, and then bring in a painter, a special painter who specializes in making, in painting like pointing it. faux bricks. Yeah, like pointing it. Making, but yeah. she paints the whole thing faux bricks, yeah. and at great expense. And we said, well, "What if we put real bricks in?" He said, "Oh, that would save that you money." <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so I had a we, faux brick wall in my last house in a podcast studio thing downstairs. It was actually really nice. Yeah. Well, we 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 have plastic bricks, but they come painted already uh, in the other yeah. studio. They're yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, you, you don't have to hire that. an artisan. No. to fake age it. I don't know. <laughs> or whatever. You know, she we did use her to make our giant gear look like it was made out of iron instead of styrofoam, but other than that, yeah. She was good. She did um, faux finishes and stuff. She was very good, right. but you know, pricey. Hi there, guys. Hi. Just, Paul, is this woman you normally work in Las Vegas. What yeah, yeah. what is this? Yeah, she can <laughs> make kind of a job is this. She can make it look like anything. I look like I, I have she a, could be like a movie set designer too. Yeah, yeah, I have a look like I have a wood bookshelf behind me with all that that's all. Yep. That's all a scrim. Yeah, it's a blue it's screen, a screen or, whatever, yeah, or green screen. Now you can just use the fake backgrounds in Skype to do all this, can't you? Yeah, but have you don't ever yeah, by the terrible. way, just a tip. Turn that yeah. Skype blur I know, background the blur, on. I think it's awful. Oh, really? Oh, really? I, yeah, I see some of our hosts use it, and I just want to... Ooh, Let's, let's really? turn it on and try and show everyone how terrible it is. Can you do it? Do you have it there? How do we do this? Yeah, I forget how you do I it. Know. Yeah, I forget work. how you do it, too. I don't know if it'll work with a, your your bland background. No, I've done it. Oh, but, well, it, it's like the... How will you oh, know geez. it's out of focus? <laughs> something. Well, it's... Uh, but but it does, can't you it's use like fake mode. backgrounds, too? Yeah, it doesn't can. have to be just blurred, right? the key, right? what we call that, you know, the cutout is not good, so your hair kind of has... Yeah. Yeah. See, so you can't. Yeah. See the fuzz all around him. That's the only change, by the way, because your background is is <laughs> blank. But you're but you're outlined in fuzz, like blur. You know. Like, you know. Oh yeah. Look. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, that is weird. Oh, his hands I'm are putting blurred. my hands in the cookie better. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That's pretty weird. It's not a good effect. Yeah. Don't do it, kids. Yeah. yeah, that's not good. No. 
So, you've been playing. I'm really excited to hear about this. You've yeah. been playing with xCloud. This is Microsoft's yep. streaming gaming service. It's just in the nick of time. Stadia, Google's streaming gaming mm -hmm. service, launches on the 15th of next month. I will say, you know, every time Google comes out publicly and says something about Stadia, I get a, I get this general feeling of angst from the community because the Stadia stuff looks good. And I try to remind people that Google has no particular expertise <laughs> that Microsoft can't match when it comes to streaming whatever. Um, they just don't. So if, if Google's able to achieve some kind of a latency level or, you know, some frames per second or some quality level or whatever, I, I'm positive that Microsoft can match it. Just to explain for people who mm -hmm. haven't been following along as avid gamer Paul Therott has been, yeah, what, what are we talking about here? What, what well, this these service is, uh, these services, right? There are a bunch of these things coming. It was so on live a, a years ago that failed. Right, right. Gaikai, Sony bought them. Yeah, but I think that the, well, there are going to be exceptions to this. I think some of the big uh, game studios are going to be able to pull this off as well. But when you think about the infrastructure required to deliver games at scale, you're really talking about Amazon, you're talking about Microsoft, you're talking about Google. And of the three, uh, Amazon, uh, Microsoft is the only one that actually has a, a game service, Xbox, right? right? So there's a natural thing going on there where I think they can take their existing library and relationships and gamers and potentially move them to the cloud in ways that Google can't with Stadia and Amazon can't with whatever they end up doing. And you know they're going to do something. So, but does Google really need expertise? Because they're going to what they're going to do is you have to buy the game like a regular game. Yeah. And instead of you getting the content, right. it goes on Google's servers. They they do know how to stream video. They run YouTube. Oh, for sure, for sure. So I mean, I think they have the server expertise. But games yeah, they have don't a know completely gaming. difference. Really, you can you can front load a video. Uh, this is something that uh, Microsoft and Google and others you know oh, figured yeah. it a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, where you kind of buffer the thing and and then it works really well. So if you have connectivity issues as you go, as you would, especially on wireless, uh, it can it can compensate for those problems. That's, that's buffering. Gaming is is trickier. Can't buffer a game. Well, it's not it's not a predetermined path, <laughs> right? For one thing, I mean, uh, and of course, you could be playing a multiplayer game against other people. Then you're dealing with the latency of all of the connections. There's all kinds of issues that kind of come into this. And so, you know, we've known since I want to say it was late last year that Microsoft was working on this in the sense that they came out publicly and said, "Yes, it's happening." And they announced sometime early this year that by the end of 2019 they would have a public preview. I think they began testing it internally with employees outside of that group in May. And this past week, I guess it was last week, they finally allowed the first people in external to Microsoft to test it. Um, and I am happy to report that I am surprised by how well the games work. There are only four of them right now, right? And so it's um, Gears 5, which is the uh, Gears 5, the latest uh, okay. Gears for War game. Halo 5, which is the last Halo game, which is actually several years old now but it's a humongous game on Xbox One, right? So both of these games are many, many tens of gigabytes on disk, maybe even 100 or more. I don't remember the exact figures. Um, sea of Thieves, uh, which is their kind of ongoing open world game, and and not my kind of a game, but I credit them even as recently as just today, by the way, uh, are adding more content to it uh, over and over again. So they've been really supportive of that title, which is cool to see. And then the other one is called, I forgot the name of it. It's a, I could just look at the, my own article, Paul. It's a, it's a side, it's just a, um, a side scrolling, like kind of 2d shooter, uh, title killer, killer instinct. And it's, um, you know, it's just kind of a classic, uh, like uh, fighting, you know, kind of game. So I stuck, I've stuck mostly to the two shooters, uh, cause I'm familiar with that kind of game. I play call of duty most of the time, uh, gears of war or gears five, I should say. And, uh, halo five. Both of these, like I said, are humongous games. Both of these take a really long time to kind of churn up, even on the console. So when you've got this stuff locally installed, Call of Duty does the same thing. You know, the, the opening screen comes up, there's an animation, music plays, names go by. You can click the button all you want. You're not getting by it. You know, it, it, it takes a while to kind of churn this kind of a game up. And, of course, when you're streaming it to a phone, and right now Project X Cloud in its current state is limited only to Android devices, which is mostly phones, obviously, but I suppose I don't have a tablet, but I suppose you could try it on a tablet. Um, you also have to deal with that part of the streaming where it kind of makes that connection, streams enough of the game down that you can kind of start it. And so, I, I honestly, aside from that little bit at the beginning, which could be 
30 seconds or something, you know, and again, for a humongous game, the experience is identical. Well, <laughs> and this fact that I'm playing it on a screen that's this small and I don't have great eyesight, so I'm st <laughs> sitting there with my cheetah glasses. You could on play it on a, big, on a big screen, right? I mean, you don't have to yeah. play it on a phone. No, no, no. Uh, that, right. And, and eventually that's going to happen, right? I mean, obviously the goal here is you're going to want to play this on a laptop or a TV set or yeah. whatever it might be, yeah. right? The um, point is you don't need a lot of processing power, right? That you, You're yeah. basically streaming the game. It's running yeah. on their servers. I mean, I look visually, it, the graphics are incredible. They look exactly like to me. It looks exactly like it does on Xbox One. Really? Not um, how about latency. Yeah. It's been fantastic. I wow. have played uh, there. There was a sequence in in Gears Five that I, I didn't get by yet, and I I kind of alternated between Xbox One and PC. And it's what happens is you you kind of crawl under a something has fallen through a doorway you have to crawl under it and as soon as you stand up in the next room, all of this stuff happens. So there's a lot going on on screen at the same time and it's all very unpredictable. And it's the type of situation where if you play video games like this, you know you kind of, it's a checkpoint. You go in, you get slaughtered, it starts over again. You crawl into the thing again, you get slaughtered. You try something <laughs> slightly different, like yeah, you know you do it. Mary just going. Or 15 huh. times. I'm like, this sounds great. What fun? <laughs> yeah, huh? Video games are the best. So much. So, fun. I actually got through it playing it on the phone. Finally, you know, huh. it was something I hadn't been able to do on the huh. bigger screen. You know, so that was kind of interesting. Um, but yes, there's no. There was no stuttering. There was no blurring. About, there was no performance. How about load time, cutscene time. I noticed with uh, Nvidia's GeForce Now, which is also a streaming yep. system. I play that on the Shield. That load time seemed long. No, that is that's not been an issue at okay. all. Okay. So in that fact, really probably has more to do with what kind of hard drive they're using on the server than anything else. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. um, like I said, if you play any of these bigger shooter type games. This is something that is actually kind of a daily um, annoyance for me in Call of Duty. You'll you'll finish a match, and then the little Call of Duty logo, well, call it Black Ops Four logo, comes up, and it comes up in the in the bottom of the screen. It's just a blank screen, yeah. And it just sits there, yeah. And it sits there, and it sits there. That's low. And all time. you want to do is get to the next game, but yeah. you have to wait, and it's a long, long wait, even on a, a Xbox One. So X. it's long. It's long no matter what. Maybe that's what it was. I, I was. It's playing. no longer. Than it is on the console. I was playing. No Man's I, and again, Sky I haven't actually has a done really it side long, by side, but yeah. it, the perception is no different at all. Okay, so it's just like you're playing at home. It, yeah, it really. That's it really, really interesting. Is. Wow. You're not gonna. You're probably not gonna do it on the bus. You know. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Unless actually, you have a five G connection someday. For scenes like you just described, where there's lots of stuff going on, that's CPU intensive as they calculate all the motions yeah. in the background. That's something it might actually be better at because you. At least on the Google device, you have you can have multiple machines working on rendering the same images, and then they just stream down the video. So it might actually be better. Where you would suffer uh, is in timing, and that's why I ask about latency. That's the thing. So this, listen, I, <laughs> this is how tuned I am to this. Uh, since I moved to Pennsylvania, I have only I only have Wi-Fi essentially in the house. It's not strictly true, but in my office, I only have Wi-Fi. So. That's a big change between uh, Dedham and here. I it was all wired in Dedham. Everything was wired. I re kind of relied on that. And one of the things that happens when you play Call of Duty, the modern, uh, the latest game, is it literally says in the loading screen, uh, you should connect this thing to Ethernet for a much better connection. And, and you can really feel the latency. You get those kind of things where, to your eyes, to what's happening, you have made it around a corner and you're fine. But then you're dead because the guy behind you was shooting at you as you were running away. But the connection is it's off, and that's it's a, like a latency issue essentially. Um, that happens all the time. It's incredibly frustrating. It's gotten to the point where I think I'm literally going to run a wire into my office just just for my Xbox. Like I I can't yeah. stand how often that kind of thing happens. Yeah. So you know if you're playing a game and you're you know shooting a gun in this case, if the thing's moving across the alien creature whatever, and you're shooting it and it's just bullets like you're in a comedy movie where bullets hit everything except the creature <laughs> yeah it's probably not you you know <laughs> it's probably um, latency yeah it's you're probably aiming latency. It, instead yeah. of aiming where the puck is going you're aiming yep. where the puck was was even though you don't realize it which yeah. is the problem right that is not happening is not happened so far in the project x cloud that's really good it has not happened that's and I'm, I'm again these are complex scenes with lots of stuff going on you're in, in both cases fighting aliens um is a lot going on and I have never never once so far again I've only had it for a few days but you know with the type of thing where the, you know the, the the scene sort of stutters and it, it that has not happened it wow. just hasn't happened now are they I mean are you on the special Paul Therott port 
like maybe they oh, maybe uh, yeah maybe i mean maybe <laughs> they're only eight people. okay yeah. that's that could be but i mean look i'm still playing it over let's see this is the other thing well no it's true i'm playing it over wi-fi i was gonna say i'm doing it over my cell network that's not true it's over wi-fi Wi so a bad I, idea anyway i mean we know we try to discourage you from using wi-fi on skype just because mm -hmm. wi-fi right. is a collision-based network mm -hmm. so if there's other wi-fi signals uh, yep. It'll pause, and so frequently we always can. Oh, tell. it's okay here, Leo. I only have like 137 devices on Wi-Fi, so I, I don't have to worry ne about it. I've never seen the, the the kind of the trademark Wi-Fi uh, hesitation with you. I didn't know you were on Wi-Fi. I can usually tell. So. Well, I have um, the tell Google Fi, uh, Google Wi-Fi mesh network here. Yeah. So it honestly, except for the, that one thing with the video games, it's never been a problem. Yeah. Hmm. All right. If I had known, I would have. So, slap, yeah, well, listen, I'm wrist. probably, like I said, I'm, I probably am going to run a wire into my office. So yeah. when I do, I'll put it. I, I'll, and Mary Jo knows this because we made her put a wire in. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I wouldn't have done this in denim. It, there was something about, I only had, you know, a traditional Wi-Fi access point there. It was just, you know, all the standard Oh, no, it problems, drives me but, nuts. I have an iMac Pro sitting yeah. across the room from my router, but I don't want to run a wire across the room, so it's on Wi-Fi. And you know what? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Can now tell me about uh, this X Cloud. Is it only what can I run it on Mac? You will be able to. Today because it's just in it, an early preview. It should be platform agnostic, right? You could run it on a Chromebook yeah, in theory. That's the point of it. Right. Yeah. So it's gonna run on yeah, there'll be a web client, there'll be a Mac client, a Windows client, there'll be Android oh, this iOS. It's gonna be really big. They haven't said this, but I'm expecting there to be set top box clients, you know, smart TV clients. See, I think that's the uh, real market for it. Not a hardcore gamer who already has a PC and an Xbox, but people on low-end machines or Chromebooks mm. or Macs that have never had access to, to uh, you know, Gears of War. And now or, for you the know, first maybe, time um, they can do AAA games on these devices. That's that's I think that's the you, market. You can and also spread the love a little bit, right? They're not so Like, in other words, yeah. even if you're like an Xbox guy and you have an Xbox, there are times where you're not there, you're out in the world or whatever, and this opens up the possibility of playing these games in other places with other devices, which is cool. Right. You could have bought a first gen Xbox and maybe you didn't or Xbox One. You didn't upgrade to the S, you didn't upgrade to the X. You're really not sure if you want to spend that kind of money, but you have this investment in your games collection. And it's not a hundred I'm sure it's not gonna be hundred percent, but some percentage of that's gonna come forward to X Cloud. And um, you know, for example by the way, that's the other thing I should have mentioned. So in case it wasn't obvious, because I didn't say this explicitly. I had been playing Gears of 5 on the Xbox and on the PC. I've been switching back and forth. It's an Xbox Play Anywhere title. When I loaded this game on my phone and selected Campaign, one of the choices I got was Continue, and it went to where I was in the game, right? So that's one of the benefits. It's part of, it's not a new, it is a new platform in a sense, but it's it's part of Xbox. So I still get the benefits of that Xbox ecosystem thing, which is really cool. I'm excited. Uh, what's really exciting is you have multiple choices now. Um, right. right. I, I should correct myself. Stadia is November 19th. Uh, but I'm ready. I, have a, I got it. I'm I think ready. this is a tip or an app pick <laughs> toward the end of the show. But uh, there's another example of the same kind of benefit um, from uh, just the agnostic nature of like a service moving to different places. It just opens up the world. You know, it's it's nice. You know, uh, you don't you don't have to. Limit yourself to certain things because you chose an Android phone or an iPhone or a Mac or a PC or a Roku or an Apple TV or whatever. Like it's it's really neat when you can just access your stuff from anywhere. That's the the goal of with everything, right? So it's neat that Microsoft is moving in this direction with Xbox. I think they have a besides the fact that they're known for gaming, uh, they have an inside track. I I I think you're right. I think I think Google can do it because they know mm -hmm. they have the the know how. But they're not known for yeah, but they, don't, they don't have anything to bring forward. See no. that, like I said, that you know, I don't know which of my games will be available on XCloud. It will be some number between four and you know, and a you'll thousand have to rebuy it, which is yeah annoying. Right. right. Um, so I don't. I think it's mostly going to be for people who are like all in on Chrome OS or something. I don't. I, or I can't quite figure it I out. Mean, I mean, Google has an audience. Um, it's not as big as Apple's audience, but there is, you know, this group of people that they listen to music on, oh, over yeah. a Chromecast or something, oh, yeah. and they do Google Music and video and whatever, and that's fine. I mean, um, <laughs> that's I mean, look, I'm going to try it. I'm interested in it. Yeah. Um, do you think? We'll see. I don't think it's going to be technical merit that wins on this. What about Sony? Well, now, they're doing the same thing. 
Aren't they? Yeah, they're using they're using Microsoft, by the way. AWS, um, I mean, uh, <laughs> Azure. Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, that's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Is theirs available it's, now? It might emerge as the best way to do it. Yeah. Is theirs available now, or is that? No, this is just something they've announced they're working on for the future. Okay. I mean, they have their own service, like uh, PlayStation now, right? Which is um, actually is streaming. I'm sorry, they do have something now that, that works on. I think it's just PlayStation consoles and uh, PCs and Macs. Or something like that, mm. I think. But that's not Azure-based right now, right? No, that's not Azure-based. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's a good time to be a gamer. Yeah, that's for sure. I guess. Uh, no, it is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. It's going to be confusing for a little while, right? It's like the... Um, the video streaming services that are all suddenly coming out. I mean, it, it gets to the point where you yeah. have a lot of choices and too many choices can be too mm -hmm. much and, you know, there'll be a shakeout or whatever. But, right. it, yeah, it's exciting to finally see this happening. So to make it a little easier to understand for Mary Jo, it's as if you had a streaming notepad <laughs> client, but there were 15 <laughs> different people yeah. providing... See, you, know, you, know, you know Windows that. Virtual Desktop? <laughs> Imagine well, that, oh, but it only delivered you know notepad. So you remember this, Paul, I think. Some of the technology that's involved in xCloud came out mm. of work they were doing around Windows Virtual Desktop, I believe. Like some of the streaming was connected to some of the things yeah. they were working on. Oh, no, it on. totally makes sense that that would be the yeah. case. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we made the, the uh, I think no, we I talked about this. That. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, At some point we were talking about one live and someone okay. had noted yeah. that, you know, that service, which is now gone, they, they started as a game streaming service. And one of the things they realized was, you know, we could deliver virtual desktops using this technology and it would mm -hmm. be a lot easier and less expensive, uh, especially since they weren't paying the licensing on it. Right. Um, and that was part <laughs> of the reason they, you know, <laughs> they didn't succeed. Get but slapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But those things are certainly related. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I really, you know, I think honestly that the, all the growth in gaming is going to be casual games, things like Apple Arcade. Um, yeah. yeah. And I wonder. Well, you know, I, but. I'm sorry. I just wonder uh, if this is catering to the hardcore gamer. I mean, there's money in it and esports and so it's forth. It's like blockbuster movies, isn't it? You know, you'll have these handful of titles that are in billions of dollars, like yeah. Fortnite and Call of Duty and yeah. a couple of others. You know, Red Dead Redemption 2 and whatever the top couple of games are for the year. Um, but yeah, I don't think uh, it's not but so much the growth has, as it is the usage. Who Most has gaming time? is casual gaming. Yeah, who has time to play Red Dead Redemption? I mean, it's like becomes your life. It means you yeah. go home every night and, well, and, and play for hours. It's like your new job. And you can't um, you can't do it in little bites, right? You can't yeah. play five minutes on the no. on the train or whatever, and have any idea what's going on. You have to sit and down and play that, that game. Yeah, you have to actually play it. And I just think that that's, that's why a I play mindless games, Leo. I don't have like to think about it. <laughs> Call of Duty is not a mindless <laughs> you know? game. No, even even people who game, I I don't know if Paul remembers this. When I moved into my new place and I got a TV, I said to him, "This is going to sound ridiculous when I ask you this, but how do you find the time to watch TV?" Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Because I know you read a lot, you play was, games. It finds you, Mary I'm jo. just like, when? <laughs> <That's the problem. laughs> it is really hard. Right? It is really, really hard. Um, it sounds stupid. There's so but much you choice have to manage now. your time. Yeah. There's books. There's yeah. audiobooks. There's podcasts. There's TV. There's games. It's, there's craft well, beer. There's craft be beer. Craft beer. <laughs> so a, if I went into an office and I worked nine to five and I commuted X number of minutes in each direction, I would almost never play video games. It would probably be yeah, like right. one night a week. Right. You'd listen right. to and podcasts. maybe once or twice in the weekend, and that would be it. That's who right? listens to our show. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're. I would guess yeah, so ninety percent of the audience kind of is in their car right now. Hi, that kind of activity. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, is that person going to buy a three hundred dollar Xbox console? Spend sixty dollars on a game? Yeah. Um, I don't know, know and how then, Mary Joe Foley finds time to spend in bars. <laughs> right. <laughs> you you really have to you know. Can you like, you know, Mary Joe, <laughs> there's a game you can play. <laughs> I think yeah. you know we all pick our hobby. You know we all we pick do. our thing. We do. Right. And then right. there's a little sprinkling yeah, no, we all of the have priorities. Other. Yeah. No, I have like my wife will in any given week will uh, she'll go out to you know maybe one night she'll go to the gym or she goes out and runs errands or she whatever she does, and I don't mean to say that I look forward to those nights, but those <laughs> nights mean <laughs> that I hear that door close and you go whoa ninety minutes to two go. hours to myself Party. where I could yeah I could watch a movie I usually don't I could play video games I often do yeah 
you know? That's the that's how you know what your real love is, is what you do when your wife goes out of the house. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that's the, that's right. the test. Right. Yep. Um, you know, the nice thing about hey. casual games, I will say this in their favor. Mm -hmm. You can play it while you're watching TV. <laughs> Yes. Or on the subway. You see everybody subway. playing on the subway, Is right? It, so and that's I also a good think question. There's, so there's something you, healthy to that. Seriously, keeping your mind occupied um, and doing something that's a little interactive or is interactive, I think is healthy. Just really? from a brain, a brain health perspective. <laughs> really? A brain health? <laughs> brain health so when, Keep so the when brain you, in your brain. When you ride the subway, Mary because I don't, I don't ride mass transit because yeah. I live like two, two miles away, but... When you ride mass transit, I know people are on their phones. I see that. And you th you oh, think yeah. they're playing games? They are. I oh. see. I look down and I see everyone playing games. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want you to do a survey of what game they're playing. You'll often see those, so, uh, the jewel yeah. games where they, a lot you of the, know, lot of that. Right. Turn things the little around square and things, things, things that. Well, that's, that's what Lisa that's does when she's activity. playing, um, yeah. watching TV. She'll play those games or right. Plants vs. Zombies. And yeah. both are somewhat mindless. I see well, a lot of people plays, watching uh, movies. Word, Word with Friends or one of those yeah. games. Word with right? Friends Where, is another one. Lisa has 20 games going. Yeah, right. Yeah. So my wife does the same thing. That's just, that's smart. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Is it smart? Yeah. No, it is. It really is. <laughs> that, well, what I on do, the subway, not... you don't want to look at people. No, right? you need something to <laughs> occupy you. Otherwise, you no. breathe. If you make eye contact, it's oh, over. it's over. Like, you're done. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Lisa's I'm not in, kidding. Lisa's in Manhattan <laughs> right now and... Um, Oh, she is? Yeah, nice. she went down. She was going to take the subway because I told her the fastest way to get around town is absolutely the subway. And she saw how yeah. traffic jam was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And she went down and she said it was full. <laughs> I said the subway was oh, full. Oh, it's packed. She said <laughs> it was yeah. full. We're all, done. We're all done for the day. Yeah, it was full. Yeah. So she went back up and walked. And she said, you know what? Manhattan's actually not that big. I said, yeah, she walked from downtown to midtown. Yeah. It's, you know, Manhattan is congested because I'll often get off at uh, the Port Authority and have to get halfway across the island or all the way across. And it's faster to walk than it is Often to drive. Often faster to walk. It yeah. is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a great city for walking, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And you can always get a beer along the way. Just stop at Rattle and Hum. <laughs> or many other so, fine establishments. Don't play games when you walk, though. That would see. That would be dumb. Oh. Do you see yeah, people? people on, you see people on their phones when they're walking in in New York, right? Constantly. Constantly. I actually I saved somebody's life who was <sighs> doing that. He was strolling he went to the street. Step out. He was at 34th Street and he's on his phone and the and the light changes and he steps out oh. and I just grabbed his coat and pulled him back and he looks at me and I'm like, and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God is his right. By yeah. six inches from his face. Yeah. Who yeah. says New Yorkers don't care? I just, you know, I didn't want to have things happen to me like when he gets yeah. squished by the bus that Not was good. oncoming. It would have gotten yeah. blood all over your nice suit. Yeah. yeah I understand. <laughs> Wow. Oh, New York. Oh, New York. <laughs> New York wow. is a bad rep. That's not fair. People there are very nice. Oh, I no, love New York. No, people there are great. Oh, I agree. <coughs> I'm hoping, see, I'm hoping Lisa will have a good time because I want to move there. I'm hoping she'll. What? Well, <laughs> well yeah, I, I like. you out. <laughs> I was born in New York, dude. I'm I know, a New Yorker. you're an East Coaster. You could do it. I, I grew up on the Upper West Side, Morningside Heights. Yeah. I, I, could, I don't know York. if I could ever do it. Well, it's there, hard. And I. It's um, you know what I say. You're uh, e New York's really only good if you're very rich or very young, mm -hmm. which leaves well, you yes. out. So. I, mo I moved here when I was neither, so. <laughs> but you still yeah, love I'm it. On the opposite side of that little you diagram. Still love it. Yeah, <laughs> it helps though. If you if you have enough money that you don't have to deal with the white ploy, then yeah, who cares if the subway's full? And if you're young, you don't care either because everything's yeah, exciting true. and new. Every young person should live in a big city at one point, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> All right, let's uh, – I'm excited. I uh, So when it, you're in the beta, when does yep. this become public? They haven't said. So obviously, I'm sure right now if you ask, they'd say when it's done. You know, they, they, they'll escalate it. Eventually, they'll, they're going to let in more people. They're going to let it happen on more device types. They'll do a public uh, beta, you think? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This this is a, a well. Like, like, it's essentially public. I mean, you could have signed up for it. Oh, you. Oh, uh, you didn't get in because you're Paul Thorat. You just got in. No, I actually, I did. But but oh. people could have signed up for it. I mean, it, or, they did. Ha they do still have. I think a sign up for it. So they yeah. are letting. People. You know what? I think I signed up for it years ago, months ago. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll keep our eye peeled. I I think the fact that Stadia launches November nineteenth might be a little telling. That might be a little pressure on my. I know. That's why I thought they they. Went um, public with this now. Maybe at Ignite? 
Well, they had, I mean, they had said it was happening this year. So yeah. Yeah. But well, weren't you surprised when it happened Monday? It just seemed to come out of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, I was. But yeah. Uh, yeah. the other thing I was surprised about, though, was how well it works, right? So it's, it's done. It's ready. It seems like it's there. How many games? Uh, that's the thing. So right now there's only four in the preview. So mm. when you see them on the screen, it's funny because when you think about a, a, a phone in landscape mode, the four icons take up the entire screen. So, you, you know, you're, <laughs> I tried to scroll down and there was nothing. And I'm like, well, here goes this yeah. one. And uh, no, that was the whole thing. But, it, you know, again, it's just a preview. And by the way, again, I should stress this too. Three of those games are humongous. Yeah. Right? Sea of Thieves, yeah. uh, Gears 5, and Halo 5 are all really, really big games on disc. See, I played Sea of Thieves when it first came out. In fact, that's why I got a play pass so I could play that. Yeah. And it was not much fun, but I'm told by a lot of people it's really fun now. Yeah. I think like a lot of those open world it games, better. Uh, they get way better over yeah. time. Yeah. As they add all content right. and more tasks and things. Well, I canceled my uh, play pass because I just never played. Yeah. How much do we know how much uh, this xCloud will cost? Well, no, but we can look to what they're doing with a Game Pass, right, which is now available in three versions. There's the one for console, the one for PC, and then Ultimate, which covers both. Yeah. And I think that version is, I want to say that's $15 a month. I think normally they're $9.99 for either platform. Uh, obviously, xCloud is cross-plat and... It's a different kind of a service, so it's not. It's going to be in there somewhere. We know Stadia is pretty inexpensive. It'll probably be bundled, in other words. You think yeah, as part know. of the, I mean, it'll be a Play Pass option, maybe. Yeah, I mean that would be. Yeah, that, I, that would probably be. Yeah, yeah, but I don't. I don't know. Yeah, so necessarily. Stadia is ten bucks a month. Yeah, which I think seems high because you have to buy the games. They say they'll have some free games next year, but that seems high to me. Yeah, and you was I think. What did you say earlier that the the competition wasn't going to be based on technology, but on content? I essentially? think that's true of consoles. I think it's going to be I true. I think of this. yeah, I think you're right, and I think. But the thing that's going to differentiate these services too is going to be the delivery method. You know, um, uh, Xbox Game Pass today is uh, you subscribe, but you have to download to the console. PS Now today you subscribe, and you actually stream the games, and so that this. Different games on each one for sure. That's part. That's a huge part of it. And then I think the viability of the different business uh, methods is kind of important too, right? Because if you're living in a rural area with terrible connectivity, yeah, it's not practical at all. A streaming gaming service isn't going to make gonna sense happen. anytime soon. But you know, most people uh, in urban centers have yeah. high speed internet. Yep. Yeah. No, and I think five G is going to transform this kind of thing too. Maybe if it if it ever comes, if it works, if it works. Yeah. I mean, five G. Uh, that's what I meant. Like, if five G is realized, right? You know, not in, if it's available in, on a in two a block certain, square in Manhattan. Yeah, somewhere. Exactly, in a certain corner of an NFL stadium somewhere, yeah. you'll be able to play. If you're oriented toward the moon, <laughs> in the middle of the day. Let's take a little break. Then we're going to talk about Windows twenty H one. What's the deal? But first, a word from Zapier. You, you know, you asked a good question, Mary Jo. How do you guys find time to play all this stuff? Well, one way is Zapier, automating the mundane busy work that you do all the time so that you don't have to think about it. In fact, people use Zapier, which, which allows you to, you know, connect. It actually works with every app, like 1,500 apps. Of course, all the social media like Twitter, Facebook, all the email like Gmail. Uh, I use it with my... Um, my news reader, in a reader, when I favorite an article, Zapier automatically sends a link to Twitter, to links for Twit, automatically puts it on Pinboard, which is a bookmarking service, and automatically makes a line in a Google Sheets spreadsheet that Carson and I maintain for stories we're going to cover on upcoming shows. All I do is click the star, and all of that happens automatically. And that's that's really what's so cool about Zapier. Multi-step zaps. Very easy. You don't have to be a computer programmer. It's drag and drop. It's totally easy, but very complete, very powerful. It's exactly the right service for me. I tried other ones, and Zapier really is the one. I've been using it for more than five years, I think. More than four and a half million people use Zapier. And on average, each of them saves, get this, 40 hours a month. That's 40 more hours playing Call of Duty. 40 more hours watching tv reading books 40 more hours to do the things you love not the mundane busy work that's how great zapier is i am such a fan 
If you're in sales, you'll, you'll it, it integrates uh, with your email and your CRM. We use Salesforce. You can auto, you make a new uh, lead. If you get a new lead, you can engage them instantly. You can have specialized formatted emails you send out. You can import new customers immediately into Salesforce. You can notify your team. Hey, we got a new one. We use it like crazy. It's fantastic. Connections to over 1,500 apps. And because it supports multi-step zaps, you'll actually do less programming, less configuring, and just get more done. I only have to do one trigger action, and all these things happen. It's so cool. I don't even think about it anymore. I just know it's going to happen. Completely trustworthy. You can build the solution you need in minutes. You don't need to go to the engineering department or the developers. You just do it yourself, and there's nothing. There's no better feeling than saying, yeah, I got that. I got it handled. Make more time to do what you want to do. Grow your business or watch TV right now through November. Try Zapier free. Go to zapier.com slash windows, Z-A-P-I-E-R. Zapier.com slash windows for your free 14-day trial. Automate everything you do. Automate all the things with Zapier. Zapier.com slash windows. Okay, so 1909's done. It's mm -hmm. screwing up all of our computers. Good news. <laughs> You didn't need a start menu, did you? Come on. Yeah. You bug. didn't need that. <laughs> okay, that's not fair. It's there most of the time. <laughs> did they fix that, by the way, the start menu disappearing thing? Uh, no. I, it might have been part of Tuesday's thing last week. We know uh, what uh, we know what update it was. And I got a lot of email from people saying all I did was I yeah. uninstalled that hotfix and everything works. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So they must have fixed it. I mean, if they know what Unless did that it. Unless that was the thing. Did it, ha it didn't happen Tuesday. This was from before. No, I, well... I can't remember when I Tuesday? When last that, week. It was last yeah. week. Yeah, all last that email week was came in. Tuesday, right? Oh God. Yeah. <sighs> but still, that shouldn't have done anything to 1909, should it? It's the same remember. release. You get the same. Oh, right, updates. it's the same release. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. 1909 is really 1903. And it's hard for us because I didn't have. I had zero problems. I've Which, updated way, my Surface Go. I've updated my Lenovo. I haven't had any problems, so I don't know. This. No, I haven't either. And honestly, I didn't have any problems in 1903 either. But 1903, 1909 to me have been great. Last year, obviously, was a nightmare. We've talked a lot on this show about this thing that Microsoft said back when they announced Windows as a service, right? So that January 2015, probably, uh, Terry Myerson, et cetera, et cetera, up in Redmond. And the idea was they wanted to get as many people as possible on the same version of Windows, and that made tons of sense and is literally impossible. But if they can do this in a way that um, you have two different versions of Windows 10, in this case, 1903 and 1909, that literally get the same updates, right? Mm -hmm. That gets them much closer to what they were hoping to achieve. Yes. And, yep. you know, it's, that's good for, it's good for people, obviously users, but, you know, it's good for Microsoft too because there's a huge complexity I think, in having to support so many different versions of Windows right now. Yeah, totally. You know? So one thing I've learned since we talked about 1909 last week, which is kind of interesting, is I, I was wondering if when they roll it out, if all the new features, and there aren't many, there I'm like all, like ten, all 10 things or whatever, are going to yeah. be on by default or off. And you know what? They're going to be on. Yeah. <laughs> That actually makes so more you know, sense, doesn't it? You know why? But, but it confused me because remember when they were testing this, 19H2, right. 1909, they kept um, testing what we're going to roll it out to people with all the features off. And then we're going to roll it out to some people with the features on, right? And so I thought, oh, so they must be going to be going to roll it out with all the features off and they'll let people turn it on or they'll turn them on. But no, that's right. not how it's going to be. So yeah, why last were week they when testing we talked that about then? This, I compared it right. to an R2 uh, type release right. because in those releases, those features that were new were turned off by default. Right. But these are going so to be on. the case. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that honestly, that kind of makes more sense. It does make sense. But it also makes me question why were they doing the throttling thing and testing all the features being off by default? Was it just so they can turn them off if they don't work? I, I, like if I, something I can breaks? only guess because I feel like the testing process is insane. But I, I just mentioned that 1903 and 1909 are receiving literally the same updates. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 1909 with the new features turned off is 1903. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so maybe the point of this was to test to make sure that those same updates that were being delivered worked identically in both cases, good. right? I'm just yeah, guessing. That's I can only, I, I'm just guessing, but. You know what? I think, I think that makes a ton of sense. 
that that would be why uh, they're doing. Yeah, and that means it probably isn't the reason, you know. But that's my <laughs> that's my guess. Right, and, but you know, with server. So when server nineteen oh nine comes out and starts rolling out mm. to people in the mainstream around mid November is what I hear. Um, right. That is just basically server nineteen oh three with a cumulative update. That's what it is, right? That's why they haven't tested it with insiders <laughs> at all. You probably you probably know the answer to this because I'm not I'm not as firmly in the server world as I was say five or ten years ago. But I um, there are two paths to server today. And so mm -hmm. there's the 1903, 1909 releases, whatever. Um, and then, of course, the admin center, which is on its own path. When you mm -hmm. install this thing, there's nothing there, right? It's yeah. it's um, it, it's a server core with some additional services, basically, right? There's no, And you cannot put a UI on top of it. You have to manage it remotely. But then there's this other thing, which is how I think of server historically, where you can, like the, we would call it the full version of server or whatever, right. With a GUI Which is maybe the long-term servicing version or something. Yeah. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, um, uh, I was very confused by that. <laughs> I, so yeah, today, when you see you those know, insider things where they say, "Hey, we have a new build of server," this yeah. is the server. This is the headless server. This is the server with no UI. Yeah. And no ability to add a UI locally. Right. I, this was all. This all happened when they used to have Nano Server. Right. right, and then they right. changed it so Nano Server became only a container-based uh, OS image instead right. of being a version of Windows that you could install. I think what this is, it, yeah. So they had Server Core, they had Nano Server, they had whatever they called the full version of Server. I think what they found with Server Core was that it didn't quite have enough stuff that they needed to yeah. add Hyper-V or whatever. Nano? The couple of uh, well, I'm actually not sure which one I mean, to be honest. But they, they, I think they had gone too far in a certain direction. But the yeah, thing that, that they're not nano. adding... Is it yeah. nano? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, is is the UI. Like, this is this right. will never be an interactive server product. Like, you're not going to... You can't yeah. install the user interface. I mean, obviously, you can bring up command lines and things like that. Yeah. I thought yeah, that was so nano curious. now, as of, I think... What year was this? <laughs> As of 2017, <laughs> Nano, they changed us. So Nano server, <laughs> I know. You just the show title is now. What year was this? You understand that? Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what year was this? <laughs> yeah, they, that's when the they past. changed what what was Nano server, and re and redefined it basically. I want a okay. Nano server. I like that name. It's yeah. such a. I mean, I get it. You know, obviously, and and of course, what they're trying to really do is drive people to the cloud and. Yeah limit what's possible even with these on-prem servers, mm -hmm. right? And and right. hit the, the workloads that make the most sense for the people, the companies that do need those kinds yeah. of products. But, you know, in the old days, you could, you know, run a version of server, kind of strip it down a little bit. It would, run, you know, it would be like kind of a, you know, client version without all the baloney. And I don't know that it's even possible um, to do anymore, really, or that you would want to do it. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, 1909 is going to start rolling out to mainstream sometime in November. I bet they will announce this at Ignite, which is the oh, first yeah. week in November, right? Yep. And tell you guys exactly will be what. at Ignite, and then I, are we, we going to do yep. a show from Ignite? Do you know yet? Yep. Oh, yep. Good. Well, well, we don't have well, we gonna, don't have a space. <laughs> right. We're going to do it from our hotel rooms. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but you. Well, I should say they offered us a space. They offered us some time, but they only had 45 minutes. Yeah. On the. I don't, it was also main, out in the open, or, too, on the show floor, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, was that what it was? Oh, that would be it, yeah. I don't know. Was, if you had the right microphones, I, of course, I don't know what they would have. But that would, Leo, do you, yeah. have you ever had a terrarium in your house? Um, <laughs> okay. So, in I'll this bite, scenario, yeah. I would be uh -huh. that little horn toad thing. <laughs> I would know, be the mushroom. Sunning myself on a rock. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> People could throw flies over the top. Oh, I see. You don't want to be in public when you do the show. Well, it was it was a weird setup. Somebody in our new forums was reminding me, and I don't think we ever found the clip of a few years ago, you were doing it at some event. Maybe it was an Ignite, and Paul took a behind... The the speakers took a running leap into a, pot, into a bean pile of bean bags. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was. Oh, I do remember that. It was a long time. You were talking that? about Tom, Tom Warren. So <laughs> Tom Warren. At that time, so yeah. that was a PDC. It was in Los Angeles. Yeah. We Long um, Zang it was a long was time there. ago. It was a long right. time. Yep. Long Zang. Long yeah. Zang fell asleep in the um, the yeah. cushion for it that we made. <laughs> yeah. And then 
Yeah, so we were we were having different people on the show, and so like in turn, you know, uh, I don't remember who exact Long probably was on at some point, Raphael, yeah, Raph. and then when yeah. Tom Warren came on, I did that. I jumped. I, we had made a gigantic. <laughs> we constructed a giant mountain of cushions in the back, and then I ran from twenty feet off and I jumped over the top of it <laughs> and came crashing down in the back. It was good. Memories. So that actually is in a thread on the Twit community forums uh, called the best <laughs> you know moments on Twit. If now that you have those clues that it was at PDC, yep. and I think it'll it be PDC. you could find that clip, and yep. Uh, yep. anybody wants to post that there, twit.community, I think that'd be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good. I remember, that would be so you know, funny. Long was so cute when he was sleeping. He was uh, just nestled in there in the cushions. <laughs> he was so jet lagged. Those were the days. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. So Ignite will do that live. What, what's the date of that uh, show? It's a couple of weeks, right? It's so, going to yeah, be the sixth, I bet. Of three weeks. Okay. November. Yeah. Okay. It's probably yeah, the date. It's Wednesday. Wednesday the sixth, I think. Yeah. I will still be gone. I should mention this is my last show. I'm wearing my uh, my boating yeah. clothes because uh, Monday I'll do I'll do the weekend shows, uh, but Monday I will be headed for Athens and then on to Jerusalem and Petra and the pyramids and Dubai. Wow. And so, um, I'm going to be gone for like a really long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll carry on. Further. Carry on without me. I'll be back uh, on the weekend of, uh, I guess I get back on the 15th. Who are you going to so. stick us with this time, Leo? I don't know. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> I think I, Micah no, and I you are such a cute yeah. team and Micah, by the way, you've had your you've you've worked your your wiles on him because he asked me mm -hmm. the other day, "Can I have a Windows machine?" Wow! What? <laughs> I, no one ever, no one pressured him to do that. I mean, I you know, no, worked your wiles doesn't mean pressure. Yeah, subtle. He just wants to join the patch cocktail. He set. just yeah, he hears <laughs> the <laughs> siren call of the uh, monthly updates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he he feels like, and I think he's. A, I'm t I'm going to get him one. I think totally agree. What should yeah. I should I get him? Maybe Surf maybe laptop. I should. Do you okay? Surface laptop. That's what I was yeah. thinking. The Mac user, honestly, he would appreciate this. That aesthetics. would be a good choice, or maybe mm -hmm. the Surface Pro X. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I had my finger well, you on know the what, buy so, button, except that I thought it was going to be almost two thousand. I think he would appreciate the form factor, but I think the compatibility issues it's would going to be too much. Mm -hmm. I think it's it won't be a real Windows. Someone who's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, right that's true. There. He should have a real Windows experience. All right, we'll get him a Surface laptop. That's actually a great idea. Yeah. Unless you want him to experience the pen stuff, uh, you know. You know, yeah. that's the thing. There's no touch Mac, so if you really yeah. want to stick it to him, <laughs> give him the I'm Surface saying, Pro. Surface Pro with a pen. Yeah, maybe that might be a good idea. I'll talk to him see if he wants the idea. If he needs it to be lappable, no, no Pro. Yeah. I think I think this the Surface laptop is the closest to a MacBook. Yeah. yeah. A MacBook oh, Air, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. He's what starting, he to, be, he's what's starting his, to become what's very computer? expensive. Well, we got him a MacBook Pro, I think. I know. Okay. Well, and Surface Pro, uh, well, all the new Surface Pro 7, the Pro X and all that, they all come out next Tuesday. That's the day. Right. So. Oh, well, I'll order it right now then. Yep. So you can get a little something while I'm gone. Yeah, no. He, nice. I mean, I, already, I think a Surface laptop I, would be the I, choice. These guys are expensive. I got to buy them all this They're stuff. very expensive. <laughs> Not just no, the guys, the but service, these machines. Uh, laptop are expensive. myself, Leo. You know, while you're spending money. Oh, oh, oh no! I was hoping you would review the X for me because I really, yeah, I'd like I hope, want I hope to. an arm. Yeah. You know, I bought that Envy uh, X2, hoping I want that battery life. I want 22 hours of battery life. Mm. I like the little, the little pen cache. <laughs> it's so cute. Yeah. I do too, but you know, you gotta remember that's like a carpenter's pencil, so it's flat. Yeah, it's weird. And it mm -hmm. might be slight. I'm used uh, well, to that. Samsung. Uh, that's like it, the but... Samsung Note or the <laughs> Samsung styluses on their uh, Chromebooks. They're they they have that yeah. flat thing. It's yeah. worth it though because the magnet doesn't work. It falls off all the time, and if you lose the pen, it's like over a hundred dollars every time you lose a pen. Well, I don't right? want to lose a pen. No. Right. I ordered a Surface Laptop three today. <gasps> wow. Um, to test, mm -hmm. I'm guessing I won't like it, but you know what? They aren't going <laughs> to give me one because they know I'm tough. not going to like it. <laughs> so when, what are you going to do if you don't like it? You sell it back or what do you do? You return you can, it? 30 days of return, so. Lisa keeps saying, why do we buy all this stuff? Why don't you just do that? And I said, well, I feel guilty. Doing that. I'll take extra good care of it. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, no, and it's, if I mean, you like it, you'll keep it. The Surface Laptop was only slightly scratched. <laughs> so you're getting a Surface Laptop 3. 
I'm going to, yeah, next, wow. it says next Tuesday I should get it. So. Which color did you get? Sandstone. Oh, it's nice. pretty. I like the sandstone. Mm -hmm. I 13 think, inch. I think you're going to keep it. You didn't get Alcantara. No. 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 Of course not. <laughs> Come on. You, you could use your, you could get like one of those little mini dust busters. You could keep it clean, you know? You know, it could work as a beer coaster, but I don't think that's what, how you should be using that. You know what? Yeah. I am going to get it for Micah because if he's going to host this show, he damn well better have a, a Windows machine. I could get, just mm. give him the old go and get it oh, for Oh, God, myself. please. Don't do no, that. that won't work. Nice well, and you're fair. saying the problem with the ARM stuff yep. is that it's, it's only running a limited subset of windows apps it has to be what 32 bit 32 bit apps um and 32 bit desktop you know x86 apps but the yeah so there's that and there's a compatibility issue there but also remember that includes a lot of drivers actually it includes all drivers mm -hmm. so uh x86 drivers are not going to work either yeah. and that's a that's in some ways the bigger problem depending on what you need to use it with right. or could could so, be sandstone <laughs> i think i'll get him a laptop yeah. Uh, metal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I, core i7. Cobalt blue comes with Alcantara. It does. Mm -hmm. So does platinum. Oh, no, there's a platinum without. With or without. I think black is without and and the um, sandstone. And if and I ordered it now, it would be next Tuesday. Come Tuesday. Just in time for next week's Windows Weekly. Yep. Right. Hey, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably ask him what color. Um, what did we, where, I'm sorry, where did we leave off? I got distracted. <laughs> uh, 20H1, did you talk about that yet? Yeah, we just said, you not much new, not coming new. November, right. features will be on. Microsoft starting to nag. Yeah, starting new group nag. of people. So you, you should know about this for your show, Leo, in case it comes up. It's going to come um, up. I know it is. Right, so right. they were nagging home users before, you know, sending the notifications, hey, Windows 7, end of life, January 14th, 2020. But now they're going to start nagging Windows 7 Pro users who are not um, on a domain join network. So they, they people who are in that configuration may start seeing these same pop-up notifications starting this week and going into the next few weeks. So Hooray. if you get a question, that's what it is. <laughs> and you know, what I all, all it is, is, is it just says, it just says after 10 years, support for Windows 7 is nearing an end and it gives you a pop-up. And if you don't want to ever see that again, there's a checkbox. You just check it. No, nope, don't send me that anymore. And if you don't check it, you're going to keep getting it. If you just exit right. out, you're going to keep getting it. Right. But if you um, say you don't want to get it anymore. This is the same thing that they did last time. Yeah. God, they don't learn, do they? Well, well, this time it's a little better. Yeah, it's a little better. <laughs> you could dismiss it. You know, that's that's a plus. And it um, won't come back? Yeah, if you dismiss it and say, I don't want to yeah, see this anymore. Yeah, support's still going to end. <laughs> like, like yeah, support will being, still end. <laughs> not being nagged is nice, but you still have yeah. to rectify this. No, somehow. you don't. Exactly. No, you yeah. don't. You know, you how many people still run XP? Yeah. You know, tons that's of people are just going to go, turn it yeah. off, I don't want to see it, and thank you, goodbye. And yep. continue to run it. They won't. Right? I don't, I don't yep. feel good about people doing that. Well, I mean, I mean I we don't recommend it, but. No. Well, at least they can still use Office 2010. <laughs> For one more year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Office 2010. Um, so we, we started hearing about the end of support for that this week, too, because it's one year from this week. Office 2010 right. will no longer be getting any updates, including security updates, which is the thing you care about. I am running Office 2010 on my Windows 7 machine still. Inter um, wow, really? Yep, yep. Wow. It works. I don't need well, all sure the bells and fine. whistles. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm so, sure. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. But that's why I'm looking for the new laptop and the new setup, right? Because I'm, I'm one fell swoop. I'm going to get rid of Windows 7 and 2010 all at I'm once. I'm thinking about doing, you know, for the last 30, 60 days before XP or, uh, 7 goes out of support, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about running running it. Uh, Why not? Just to kind of just to see what it looks like to uh, ride into the black hole or whatever. Yeah. I'm in the black hole. It's fine. It's working great. <laughs> it's, fine. it's warm. You love it. It's the I'm getting nice. all my updates every Patch Tuesday. Get my updates, no problem. Well, just okay. keep applying them. It's working. Still working great. Okay. Did you get the AMD yeah. or the Intel? Intel. Yeah. Really? So the so AMD is the 15 inch. Oh, you can't get oh, the 13 inch. Yeah. I get the 13 inch. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Okay. 
So you don't have a choice. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get back, come back to that. <laughs> what is well, happening you with can, the office? What so you can order an Intel-based 15-inch if you yeah. order it as a Surface for Business device. But is that, um, that's probably more expensive, right? Probably. It runs yeah. pro. It also ships with pro instead of home. Like, yeah, this so is that's 60 come bucks right there. And I bet the Intel chip is more too, so. I'm gonna, yeah. I want to get the 13-inch Sandstone. That's what you got. You have such good taste. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm I I'm trying to keep an open mind, even though I say I'm automatically going to return it because it's expensive, right? When I when it I ordered expensive. it, I th I think I it paid hurts. with tax like eighteen hundred bucks, right? Well, That's expensive. if you want uh, the i5 with eight gigs of RAM and two hundred fifty six gig storage, twelve ninety nine. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah. If it you want it with an i7 sixteen gigs RAM five twelve storage, two thousand dollars. I know. Yep. Yep. They're not cheap. <laughs> I don't care about the i5 would be fine. I need sixteen gigs of RAM. You gotta have uh, that. At that point, you're gonna get two fifty six. That's not a choice. And so you're looking at seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars. I don't see an yeah, i five with two fifty six. I mean, that's what I mean. You can't. 16. It's not a choice. Yeah, it's not a choice. You have to go i seven. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna get him the cheap one. <laughs> what is? What does he need anything fancy for? Wow. I know. You know, no one really does. For who's a normal person? No, no, if you're not yeah. getting. Like really yeah. intense. He has a fancy stuff. Mac. He can do all his video editing and his yeah. photoshopping. With. Yeah. <laughs> all he needs to do is bring up the show notes. You know exactly. You know we want him to become one of us. I would like him Apple to person. have it by next Windows Weekly. I think that would be a good thing, huh? Yeah. So it's saying when you order it today, it says will will likely ship by next Tuesday. Um, no, I think it says will likely be received by next arrive, Tuesday. Yeah, arrive on he, Tuesday. He yep. uh, says he wants blue, but it has Alcantara. I yeah. think I should get him a blue one with Alcantara. I do too. Let, make him Let him try Alcantara. Alcantara. Some people like Alcantara. I don't know who they are, but they do. Some people like it. I don't it. mind it. I, you know, I mean, you're I that guy. I don't dislike it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time I use my Go that has an Alcantara oh keyboard, uh. I, I'm always like, okay, am I making the keyboard all messed up now? And am I going to be able to clean it? Yeah, at least you can metal? throw that thing away and replace it. Like the, you know, when <laughs> yeah. it's built into the laptop, That's you're true. really stuck. I know. <sighs> I'm getting an Alcantara because I don't, it's going to be like blue suede shoes. <clears throat> Let him try true. it. Let him try it. Yeah. We can always return it, right? You can. Yep. And I think just it would, I think just we don't should rub Cheetos into it. No, no, no. He'll be he's a mm -hmm. he's a clean he's a clean person. <laughs> <laughs> He'll uh, oh I just ordered two. Wait a minute. No. Uh -oh. I don't want two. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't shouldn't be doing this while we're trying to do a show. I think the sandstone looks really pretty though. I think that it was looks a, very I think nice. That was a nice choice. It's so. almost goldy, goldish. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm gonna get him the blue suede shoe. In fact, he's. I'm gonna make him call it the blue suede <laughs> shoe. Yeah, I could name it Elvis. 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 Yeah. Oh, I'm buying you Elvis. Okay. <laughs> no, I definitely. I'm excited to try it. I the last Surface laptop I tried was the one. I didn't get to try the two, and I'm just curious how it how it has evolved or not. I know Paul likes them. Paul likes the Surface laptop. He thinks it's a great machine. I think it's just an average laptop. I'm sorry. I know. I'm hurting your feelings. Okay, I'll be okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where where are we here? I'm again lost. Um, We're coming Ignite. up to Ignite. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> what is Ignite? What is who is yeah. the Ignite for? Well, so this is interesting because it has changed. Yeah. Ignite used to be Microsoft's IT Pro show. But if you look at the agenda for Ignite this year, it is a show for everyone. Yeah. We should say, too, <laughs> it used to be called TechEd. Oh, right. TechEd. Tech Ed. Okay. Yeah. I remember yeah. TechEd. But now it's for developers. It's for Dynamics 365 customers. It's for everybody. There, there's like no area at Microsoft that is untouched by Ignite, wow. pretty much. Yeah, it is. It's their biggest trade show. Yeah, yeah. I forget how many people come. Um, I want to like say I, I, more I than ten thousand. Right? I think I was going to say thirty. I thought it was some. It's some huge number. It's a giant number. Um, and it it's is. in Florida. Okay, so this whatever year? it is, it's it's much bigger than Build. Yeah, um, it's in Orlando, Orlando, like it was last year. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you know Orlando is just the it's best. made for <laughs> me, especially you know. If you know, Mike, on these big shows, there are only certain cities they can go to because right. they need right. a lot of hotel space. Right. So Orlando is one of them. <laughs> Paris couldn't be one of them. I, mean, I know. Seriously. How about Honolulu, guys? Wouldn't that be awesome. <laughs> oh, oh. Why do why are no tech shows in Hawaii? There is one, the Qualcomm one, right? Yeah, but that's relatively small, it's really and it's show, held at a luxury resort. <laughs> like it's, you know, um, it's hotel space. I mean, you, you right. need massive amounts of hotel space, right. and then transportation and you know, all the logistics and stuff. Yeah. You know, Hawaii is uh, beautiful, but it's remote no. and yeah, difficult so and expensive. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so basically, we're looking at Vegas. Yep. Uh, Orlando, and then I, I don't know, Dallas could Dallas. probably handle it. Um, Dallas could, yeah. Los Angeles. I don't know why we don't go back there. Yeah. That's about it, right? I mean, that's pretty yeah, much. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So it starts November 3rd and runs that whole week. You can look at the website and see um, a little bit about it. If you look up Ignite 2019, you can find it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we know there's only one big keynote day, which is Monday, and Satya Nadella is going to do the Vision keynote, and then Paul and I are going to do a little deconstruction of the Vision <laughs> keynote. The, the, the deconstruction. I'm yeah, going to try to explain up another cliff. Exactly. Explain what he really wanted to say, but didn't. <laughs> he it's it, it's it's you know it's almost kind of at this point sweet. <laughs> if, <laughs> dare I say that? I mean. He loves, he, uh, it's not like, see, sometimes you get CEOs and you feel like, what a big phony. Right. No, <laughs> you don't feel that way. You him. never feel <laughs> yeah. that way with Nadella. He's no. always, it's sincere. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. But it's also like, you feel like, well, no, he's got, he's getting to, he's got a point he's making. But and what is only it? we knew what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, you guys, you guys are going to do the same thing. You're, you're, and they, they yeah. actually invited you back to do that. That's amazing. I know. You know I'm doing, we amazing. do everything we can to prevent that from happening. But <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll we'll be doing that, and then right after that, they have three. I like doing. It. I mean, honestly, right? Like Seth is fantastic, and yeah, all those Seth, guys. Seth are great. Does like it's, 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 it's always a good time. I know it's yeah. great. It's going to be great. We're going to make it fun, and then right after that, the three product keynotes will be like simultaneously happening, right? So there'll be some cloud stuff probably in a developer track and um, probably a Microsoft 365 track with a lot of Windows stuff in it this Would year. Would Microsoft mind if we not only streamed the keynote, which we were going to do anyway, but also streamed your stuff afterwards? Would they... You think they'd mind? I can't imagine that they would mind. I can't imagine them minding either. Yeah, they're not you know weird about this. Like certain other some companies. other companies really no. don't like it. Yeah. When we we do can that. double check, but I mean, I'm pretty. Would sure you ask? Because that's I yeah. would. I mean, for crying out loud, you're Paul and Mary Joe. I would like to hear what you're saying. Yeah, right. we'll ask. I know our audience I know would. Ask. I mean, that's like an extra <clears throat> Windows Weekly we get. Yeah, just right, to ask. Right. Say. You know, okay. they want to restream it. They won't. They'll do it with commentary. They don't do it. We don't do it full screen. We do it right. with the, our hosts. And, mm -hmm. and of course, if you're on there, then we're not going to do much commentary because you're doing the commentary. But um, yeah. we do yeah, the we'll commentary ask. in the keynote. That would be great. I feel like that's okay. what we should do. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I can't wait. So right. But they will announce products there. I bet you. They will. <laughs> what will they announce? They will. So we have some hints already about some of the things they're going to talk about. Um, you know they're going to talk about intelligent cloud and intelligent edge. There's no way they're not going to say those words, right? Microsoft Graph. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, tech intensity? Do you think they're tech going to say intensity? That? No. Okay, so if you hear Satya say tech intensity, I'm going to explain to you what this. What does means. that mean? All it really means is um, people who we count as our customers are getting more tech savvy so that we can deal with them at a higher level. So instead of just saying that, they call it tech intensity like it's a thing. Uh, even have also, a, if you hear the phrase floor, tech intensity, <laughs> please understand that I will be physically restraining her from running up on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's one of those buzzwords that drives me kind of crazy. But that's what it means. It just means our customers are getting more tech savvy so we can deal with them at a higher level. And everybody needs to be tech savvy, even if you're in a business that is not a technology business, like if you're Walgreens or if you're FedEx or whoever, right? That's all it means. Um, so you'll hear that probably. <laughs> going to hear a lot about Power Platform. Remember Power Platform? That is Power BI plus Flow plus Power Apps. 
and the common data service and common data model that underlie them. I can guarantee you there are hundreds of sessions about it. Do you so, think yeah. that this power platform is essentially the Microsoft 365 platform? Like the it's connected. Programming platform? Well, there's also a thing called the Microsoft 365 developer platform that is yeah. not the same as power platform. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So the Microsoft 365 developer platform is graph, right? Microsoft graph, which is their centralized right. API that everything connects into now. And yep. also Azure, um, AD, so having to do everything having to do with common identity and single sign-on. And then even mm -hmm. that fluid framework thing that we heard about at Build, that's oh, yeah. part of that too. So do you think we'll get an update on that? Yep, we will. Yep. If you look at the sessions, there's a session about it. So now this was will. the thing they got it got very exciting and then they kind of said, Yeah, we're not doing most of that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I want to hear them re explain fluid yeah. framework. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about yeah. um Quantum, they haven't, well, I guess that was more of a, a build type of thing. I know. But quantum so, computing never came up this year, right, at build? No, and there's only one session listed <laughs> on the session roadmap, but guess who's giving the quantum computing session? This should give us a hint. Mark Rosinovich. Ooh, really? I want to go. <laughs> really? I want to go. Yeah, which means wow. maybe there's, uh, maybe it's less vapor now and more reality, you know, not mm -hmm. just like a developer emulation kit but something more because, i was really surprised at our yeah. boston uh, last pass event i was mocking it you know i know we've had quantum supremacy and all that stuff but i said nobody's <laughs> really got a stable quantum computing computer do they and they said oh yeah, yeah. ibm has a 50, IBM. 56 qubit i said yeah. stable and they said yeah i said yeah. Right. oh i know so we are close to the, the quantum era yeah right right and because quantum is so connected with ai right being able to do AI processing of 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 the kinds of queries that you can't currently do in any sane manner. <laughs> that I think that's the connection. Quantum the is insane, by the way. It's it mind-boggling oh, to those of us who grew up with the deterministic, you know, <laughs> von Neumann machines. Oh no, yeah. I, I this is re, will remain the number one thing I've been most confused by it's, since I covered. It's a this. Schrodinger's like, cat computer, basically. I walked out of that meeting twitching. I had yeah. no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> I also asked because it was you know it was this last pass event was about security and authentication. It, uh, should we worry about crypto? And they said not really. First of all, crypto scientists have been thinking about this for ten years. We knew it was coming, so they have quantum proof algorithms. But they yeah. also but they also said you know just double your key size, yeah. and that that's going to give you a, a whole lot more headroom. Uh, so I said you mean I already have forty ninety six? They said that's you doubled it already. Mm. Yeah, I said, should I go to eighty one ninety two? They said, no, you don't need to do that. So, <laughs> if you're using a four thousand ninety six PGP key or or AES key or whatever, you're fine. You're all set uh, for the quantum era. The quantum era, at least plus for the now. Asimov's rule of uh, quantum computing. What's so, that? You know, first do no you harm. Know, do no harm to man, kind of thing. <laughs> Oh. Yes, more things. We I can live in such, such a weird, weird world. world. It's so computer. amazing. I, know. I can't believe. I know. It. So I also think we're going to hear about um, bots again and that whole yeah. conversation as a service kind of stuff, the bot framework. Um, they have about, they have a uh, – um, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna, <laughs> you mentioned Intelligent Cloud, Intelligent Edge. Do you think we're going to hear yeah. anything else about Azure Around Sphere that. or any – Yeah, maybe, stuff, maybe about Azure you know, Sphere. Yeah. Or non-Azure um, Sphere, IoT, yada, yeah, yada, yada, we could. whatever. Yeah, we could. Um, also, I think we'll probably hear something new about Azure Stack, right? Because Microsoft's been really quiet about Azure Stack, their hybrid platform this year. And that, to me, means something is brewing. And I, I think I talked about this on the show a few weeks ago. There's this thing called Project Saturn that has to do with something they're changing in Azure Stack, but I don't really know what it is. So maybe at um, Ignite, mm. we'll hear more about that. How much uh, Windows stuff do you think we're going to hear? A lot. Like if you put yeah. Windows in as a query on sessions, there's a lot of them. And so I think here's my, if you said to me, what would be the most awesome thing they could announce at Ignite and surprising? I would say yeah. if they talk about WinUI 3 there, uh, I think they could actually well, uh, be giving us clues about what's going to happen with Surface Neo and Duo as uh, the developers. Yeah, I think there's a chance of that. I, that I, would given be what happened in October, this you know past month. Um, yeah. That would be really interesting. That would be amazing. Yeah. And that would like be super. Well, they like, did promise un within weeks or then they said months, yeah. you know, developer right. information, et cetera. I mean, like this would be the logical time for it. Not it at would. a developer show. 
There's so well, much developer too, The developer shows too far out, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just at least discuss what the deal is. You know, just explain it, yeah. even at a high level. This is how it's going to come together. Right. Yeah. They do have a session listed that they're going to try to explain and clarify what's going on with UWP.net, WPF. So they could throw it in there and just say, and, right. you know, here's WinUI 3. Right. XAML Islands, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it could be good. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel right. Islands, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. I'd rather blah, hear about uh, Samuel yeah. Islands than tech intensity. I'm just saying. I that's agree. Me, that's just I me. agree. <laughs> Steve Ballmer used to do that all the time. Remember, he'd be talking up on stage blah, and he'd blah, say blah, something blah. like, "We're going to do the Samuel Islands, blah blah blah." <laughs> he, he used to always kind of throw that out. As a, yeah. I really like that about him. He was just such a person. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I'm telling you, this show is going to have a lot of stuff. Um, we we don't know any of it yet. We are not under NDA right now about any of it, so we're just Speaking guessing ways, here. But they, uh, hopefully, we do learn something. Or they usually do like a pre-show briefing thing, right? I know they yeah. do for Build. Hopefully. Well, um, so yeah. if will the keynote be the place that we'll hear the big announcements? Well, they, they'll do that yeah. at the keynote, right? They're not going to save it for this. Oh, they'll probably right. save it for the secondary keynotes, the, oh, the real nitty-gritty news and, and gonna, products, right? Yeah, we're not going to stream that. We're, but don't we're worry, just, we're going to... No, there'll be, no, be announcements there. You'll tell, us, you'll tell us everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, usually Satya is more like setting the stage, yeah, yeah. giving kind of the highest level. Because, you know, the other audience that comes to Ignite, are, there's a lot of CIOs and mm -hmm. CMOs. Mm -hmm. So they, they don't want to make it only an IT pro show anymore. Right. They want to up-level. Yep. That makes sure. sense. I disagree, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, not that they've consulted me on what I they just want to <laughs> spread a little Alcantara on the top of that. Exactly. Bring it to a new audience. I'm so excited. Yeah. The blue. Screen. It's going to be a good show. Okay. I think I, it's a, it's the a perfect time for a lot of different things that they've been working on to kind of percolate up to the top. I'm excited. Okay. Our yeah. coverage will uh, begin with Paul and Mary Jo. Actually, we'll begin with Satya Nadella. And then conclude with Paul and Mary Jo, and then we'll do Windows Weekly after at some point. We'll figure it out. You know what? I kind of don't care because I'm not going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be on a boat. Yeah. I'll be on a boat. Our show today brought to you by Express VPN. Man, this is a great VPN client. I, this just blows me away. And I've tried them all. This is the one I now tell people to get. First of all, it's super easy. No configuring necessary, although you can do manual configuration if you want to. But on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, I've got it right here in front of me on my Linux machine. It's just one click. You turn it on. If you want to choose the server, and they have servers all over the world, you can do that. So you, you can, But you don't have to. If you just click, it'll choose the server nearest you, the one with the fastest throughput, and you're in. And what I love about ExpressVPN is it is fast. You, I... I turn it on on my phone and I forget and I'm even using it at home and stuff and I don't even notice. It's that fast. It's as if you were not on a VPN, but you are. That means you're on a virtual private network that protects you and protects your privacy wherever you're surfing. As we go on vacation, you know, we'll be using hotel Wi-Fi. We'll be using cruise ship Wi-Fi. You better believe I'm bringing ExpressVPN, putting it on all of our devices. That's another nice thing. When you get an account, you can put it, I think, on five devices, so you don't have to worry about that. Lisa will have it on hers. Uh, it protects you by encrypting your traffic from you to the ExpressVPN server of your choice. Uh, I'll be in Jerusalem, and I'm sure it'll be an Israeli server. When I'm in uh, Dubai, I'm sure it'll be a UAE server. That's So it's fast. That's nice. Uh, it means also, though, that you have to trust your VPN provider, because that's, that's the key with VPN. No one can spy on you where you are. No one can intercept your traffic, mess with your computer, inject ads, track what you're doing. But you have to trust the server because that's where they can. That's where that's where your internet access begins because it has to go out in the clear into the public world. So you've got to trust the company. That's why I recommend and use ExpressVPN. First of all, read the privacy policy. We know it's an accurate complete and accurate statement of their policy because it's been verified by an th independent third-party audit. They also use something called Trusted Server because they really want you to know they are not logging, they're not keeping track of what you're doing. Trusted Server runs their VPN server in a sandbox. It literally, under Trusted Server, cannot write to the disk. There, No data can be saved even accidentally about your visit. And then the server disappears and a new one is created. It's a container. And that, by the way, the third party also audited it, and they said, yep, trusted server works exactly as specified. So you know 
you're surfing privately. You can pay in Bitcoin if you want to be completely private. I love ExpressVPN. Now, they charge you very reasonable. It's less than 7 bucks a month when you take advantage of our special deal. I think that's a completely fair price uh, for uh, completely safe surfing, even in the dodgiest of places. Go to expressvpn.com slash windows to get started. They are the number one VPN provider, according to Tech Radar. Number one, according to CNET. I consider them number one. It's the one I use. Fast, reliable, secure, and private. That's what I love about it. ExpressVPN.com slash Windows. When you buy the one-year package at that site, you have to go to that special page. You'll get extra, three extra months just thrown in. So that reduces the price, gets you a great deal on the best VPN service out there. Protect your Internet today. You know, you don't, it, it, this new, you, we, Steve was talking about this new crack attack, the key reinstallation attack. It makes it easy for uh, hackers to actually bypass your, your WPA security, steal your information. There's all sorts of exploits out there, but ExpressVPN protects you, and that's the beauty of it. ExpressVPN.com slash Windows. Three extra months free when you buy a one-year package. Protect your online privacy now. As they used to say, as Carl Malden used to say, don't leave home without it, although I know a lot of people use it at home because they don't trust their ISP. ExpressVPN.com slash Windows. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, um, let, one more thing on the um, Ignite. Did we talk about the dev sessions? We did kind of. Yeah, you mentioned new Duo Neo. Okay, so I want to make sure. Yeah, you know what else there is? A, there's a lot of Xamarin. There's a lot of nice. WPF. Um, nice. ASP.net. Will Miguel de Icaza be there? He's listed Xamarin as a speaker. Factor pro uh, prominently in the whole yeah. Neo Duo thing, too. So. Right. Or at least yeah. Duo. Oh, interesting. Cross-platform <laughs> development for it's Android, yeah. iOS development. So yeah, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, anything else you, we, you want to talk about before I let Paul do his Xbox segment, his second <laughs> Xbox segment? It's the I shortest know. Xbox segment in the history of Xbox segments. <laughs> I'll make it too short. I know I, I am this. You know, Leo knows this because he can see the notes. The people watching this don't know this, yeah. but for most of the show, the bear pick of the week is not filled out. And then I start blabbing on about something Mary Jo doesn't care about, and all of a sudden there's a bear pick. Yeah, it's like she I doesn't do pay attention to that part of the show. See that? It, it's hmm. blank. There's just an X there. Guys, the way, wait till you see the bear pick today. It's going to be a good one. They started a thread <laughs> you might want to check out on the uh, Twit community. I know. Of beers for Mary Jo. I saw. Mm -hmm. There's lots of, uh, there's so many beers. You can never try them all. Never. <laughs> you know what? All you can do is try. And this is why I can't watch TV. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's got too much beer to drink. There's just too oh, much man. Exactly. You got a pair of noise canceling headphones you can watch on your yeah. phone. I kind of envy you. It's nice to have a hobby you just you know, you just love. <laughs> you know, it's a good. I hobby. have a hobby that I love. It's called watching TV. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> I like beer. All right. No. Yeah. Um, you can do. You can drink beer and watch TV. I can. Sure that's they go not. together perfectly. They can yeah. happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can't. You can't drink beer, ball, right? You're keto. I'm keto. I can't drink beer either. Although, you know what though? Although, I don't drink beer is the thing. I, you know, you Lagunitas has an excellent. Um, they call no, it daybreak I, or daytime. Yeah, it's a no, three I, car I, I beer. I see ads on TV. Really good. Um, Corona mm -hmm. has a new kind of I don't like low light carb beer. beer. I don't like light beer, but this Lagunitas. No, but I know. just don't. I, I'm so I don't know. I look. This is like the one part of the diet that just kind of stuck for me because I eat and drink things that are bad for me yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, but not. Beer. I just I don't. I just don't go back to beer. I can't. Yeah. I am girding myself for getting on a boat <laughs> that yeah. has seven restaurants. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Leo, listen, don't be a hero. <laughs> also, you lay. Listen, th this is true. You weigh less in water. Oh, good point. <laughs> that one's singing, We're going saying. to the Dead Sea. You know, so right? Way You're even, way less. even less there, right? Isn't it salty? <laughs> it's so salty that you just you can't even sink into it. So you could probably eat cream puffs there and, and you know, bread. <laughs> You'd be fine. Uh, I'm going to the land of baklava and spanakopita yep. <clears throat> and then the land of hummus. Yeah, but well, hummus is I, hummus. Come on, you hummus don't eat hummus. Bad for you. Hummus, please. It's delicious. Uh, oh, I want Israeli hummus. I can't wait. Meat on a yeah. stick will be everywhere. You can have and goat meat, stick. Meat on a stick. <laughs> That'll be good. 
<laughs> the boat when we get back will be I'm slightly sure they don't call it goat stick, but... <laughs> Port home starboard out. Like that. Like meat oh. and um, rice inside of a, like grape leaves will be a thing. Oh, dolmas. Yeah, and the Mediterranean diet. It's good for you, yeah, right? It is. Right. Yep. Lots of olive oil. It'll be nice. <laughs> I don't think it's that part of the Mediterranean they were talking about no. exactly, but yeah, sure. I just, I, you can't, you go places like that. You gotta. Yeah, you do gotta. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. <clears throat> you gotta. I've gone to trips to Europe and not eaten any bread. You feel bad you know? about that, don't you? Afterwards, it's like, yeah. why, why did I, I go? Like, and then eventually I was like, why am I doing this to myself? At least I'm not going to France because I could not turn a baguette or a croissant right. down to save my life. I've done it. I've done that. I've oh, literally done nuts. that on trips. Yeah. That's so nuts. Yep. It's if I thing. come back 10 pounds heavier, you'll know why. That's why they have a gym, and that's why they have. Uh, <laughs> they do have a not gym. That that's going to help you lose it's weight, exactly. Help. But you know, whatever. <laughs> they do have a gym. You can punish yourself. It's important to feel that kind of, you know, my uh, my uh, guilt. My my nutritionist <laughs> says texts me uh, yesterday saying, "So, what are you doing to plan for your trip?" <laughs> I said, "Buying bigger clothes." Whoops. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, yep. uh, let's talk Xbox, Paul. Xbox, yeah. baby. Well, like I said, this will be quick. This is quick. These are minor things. But I think back in, I think it was in August, Microsoft announced they were going to try to put an end to the toxicity that occurs online and Xbox Live in particular, right? And toxicity? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this, but people are terrible online. And they're especially terrible when you're playing in competitive games. So is um, trash talk is the, the problem? Oh, is that what it is? It's part of the problem. So um, I mute everybody on Xbox Live, so I never hear any because you hear incredible. <laughs> Kill you, Paul. Oh, yeah. it's awful. <laughs> um, but there's also stuff you'll see it in in you know Call of Duty, for example. People will um, make horrible uh, gamer tags themselves that shouldn't have gotten through the censors, but they did. Or Call of Duty in particular offers a way to have like a. Um, a clan tag where people will have terrible racist or whatever kind of stuff in there. It's, just, it's awful. Ugh. So Microsoft is, you know, once again, trying to put an end to this. So they're, they're doing all kinds of things. But one of the things, one of their first big steps here in this new initiative is to add message safety settings to uh, the Xbox One console and then also to the mobile apps. And what that means is you can get messages depending on your settings from anyone. You can get messages from your friends. You can engage with groups of people. And there's all kinds of stuff. If you're looking for groups or they have clans and so forth. Um, and they're going to be different. They, they've uh, actually, it's, I don't think it's actually out yet, but it's coming sometime in the next 30 days. You'll be able to go into this setting and, and determine the level of terribleness <laughs> with which you will subject yourself to, right? I mean, you can and turn so it up I, or down? Yeah, they have different settings. And it's obviously, it's uh, something terrible. that will improve. Yeah, it's 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 actually very necessary. Mm -hmm. If I'm in there with a person who's literally my friend, I will accept a certain level of trash talking, of course, in a message. I mean, that could be humorous. But when someone sends you like a threatening message that you don't know, maybe you just had a match or whatever, um, you can prevent that stuff from happening. It literally comes up with a little thing that says, hey, Paul, I think you're a message content protected or something, you know, so you can actually click on it and see what it says if you want to, whatever. You could report people, of course. Uh, do they do it be. with humans or AI? How do they do it? It has to be AI because it's automated. So it's, I'm sure maybe it's, it's just booking. Yeah, maybe it's, just it's a giant dictionary of terms that we don't allow. We don't have to explain what, I'm not George Carlin. I won't tell you what those <laughs> terms are, but I think we can guess. <laughs> There'd be lot. ways around that. Once you know they're doing that, you could easily do like the spammers well, do. But that's, see, that's the thing though. So for example, like let's say you wanted to put a dirty word into your gamer tag. And so whatever that, I'm not going to say the dirty word, but whatever it was, you know, you can replace certain letters with numbers or other letters or whatever. And there's a whole game you kind of play, and I, I don't understand in 2019 how any of that stuff gets through. In fact, I think the way it should be set up for a gamer tag in particular is you're going to have a temporary gamer tag when you go out there today, and someone human will look at it, and we'll vet it, and we'll do an automated thing as well, and then we'll say it's okay. Like, I don't, I see so many terrible names on Xbox Live, even today. It's 20 years later, almost. Um, I just don't understand how they get through, but people, you know, it's like, you know, life in Jurassic Park, it finds a way, I guess. But uh, terribleness will always try to work around the limits. But anyway, I, I appreciate that they're taking steps to try to stop it. So this is just part of it. This is just the messaging system, right? So it's sort of like the instant messaging part of Xbox. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. So uh, just baby steps. This is the first step. It may also be enough just to kind of um, 
say, you know, we're going to do something about this. We don't tolerate it. Just to set the tone might yeah. be enough. Mm -hmm. to, it's the, um, yeah. what is what is Malcolm Gladwell called? The broken window policing, where you, yeah. you don't let the little stuff get by. And that sends a signal that you care yeah. about the neighbor. Someone's paying attention, right? Yeah. Right. And that might That's be the uh, Van Hill and uh, Brown M and M thing, you know. That's right. <laughs> you, have a con you have a contract with an arena. You specify this little thing in the middle of a contract. If you go in and there are Brown M and Ms, you trash the place because they obviously were not paying attention. They didn't read the contract. <laughs> that means the rigging <laughs> yep. could be bad. Uh, you know, it could be a safety issue. It's a vi you know when I found out about because everybody made fun of it that they said, oh, you got a no Brown M and Ms. No, it wasn't. They they but were prima brilliant. donnas. They were no, it was yeah, it's a safety issue. Yeah, Once I understood yeah. what they were doing, I thought that I mean, was I mean, they brilliant. were prima donnas, but <laughs> the point of the contract thing was, I think we need this in our Ignite contract, I'm just saying. Yeah, for on M&M's. <laughs> it has to be right. Fiji water. No other water <laughs> exactly. will be accepted. And if it isn't, Something we're going like to trash that stage. Yeah. I think that's... It I was, like it. Yeah, I understand why you would do that. I do. Um... Anything else to say about Xbox? Oh, just the quick this the uh, Mixer Academy is something that Microsoft launched this week. It's just an online resource for people who are on either end of the Mixer spectrum, I guess, for lack of a better term. In other words, you could be a content creator where you're engaging with your community, or you could just be a viewer and you want to kind of understand how everything works. I think Mixer uh, can be confusing to new users in particular. This is kind of the new thing, right? I mean, um, gaming is a, a huge industry now, and so um, this provides. You know, just guides and little things you can do to learn about all the different features of Mixer, depending on what part of the audience that you are, right? Like a, a streamer, a moderator, or just a user. Nice. So they have yeah, courses. So just a way, just a, yeah, I think just little, you know, YouTube ever did anything like that, right? How, you know, how do you do it? That's a good idea. Well, Mixer's obviously coming from behind. They were late to right. the game. They're one of the smaller services like this. Uh, they want it to be successful. Like this, it's smart. You know, good just teach them. people how to use it. Yeah, good thing. for them. Oh, all right, real quickly, uh, let me give a mm -hmm. little plug to uh, Captera, and uh, then we'll get to the back of the book, Paul's Picks, Mary Jo's code name, and yes, there is a beer. There's always been. <laughs> you notice the as she's out of it. Yeah. See what happens? Interesting. During the Xbox <laughs> segment, huh? I tried to get through that as quick as I could, but the beer still appeared. <laughs> <laughs> They'll always, we'll always have beer. That's my promise to you. <laughs> if you are in business and you are still stuck on IE8 or Windows XP because you still have to use that program that was written in 1999 that, you know, the guy who wrote it, uh, was uh, the boss's nephew's cousin, and no one could find him anymore. And but unfortunately, everything that the business does goes through that program. You're not alone. That's really common. That's really common. But you don't have to suffer with that old funky software. Captera is a directory of modern, state-of-the-art software to help you run your business in every area of business, from CRM to ERP. I don't know what these things mean, but Mary Jo's feeding me the uh, acronyms. Uh, <laughs> digital workplace software, vid video management software, you know, all the stuff you use, even down to simple line of business software for yoga studio management or dog groomers, whatever your business is. There's software, modern software that you can use to make your life better. And it's all on Captera, 700 categories, thousands of programs. And here's the best part, Captera has more than 1 million reviews. They get 1,000 new reviews every single day. That's because so many people use Captera. 1,000 new reviews from verified users every day. So when you go in there and you search for the software, all the software is there, you'll find, you know, a, a, often like a dozen programs in any given category. You can narrow it down. There's great filters that are tuned to the category. Do, do you want to make appointments? Do you want to keep patient records? Do you want to run on-prem or do you want to run on the cloud? Do you, How many seats do you need? All of those, you narrow it down. You get the, the three programs that do everything you need to do. You can compare them side by side so you really know what you're looking at. And then, But that's the best part. Then you look at the reviews, and there's so many reviews that you're never going to have to worry about using software that you don't know anything about. You're going to know exactly what actual users say about this program. It really makes it easy to choose. One million reviews. They're validated so you can trust them and you can be confident with your new software. Captera make, believes that software makes the world a better place because software can help every organization 
become a better version of itself. Millions of people use Captair every month. Oh, and I actually, I, I said the reviews are the best thing. Here's the real best thing. It's free. There is no charge. It's not freemium. It's not they're going to try to sell you later. It's free. Free. I think that's why there's so many reviews, because people want to pay it forward. They're so, they appreciate it. Capterra.com slash windows. Now, I know you're smart, and you could just go to Capterra.com. Would you do me a favor? Go to Capterra.com slash windows. You get exactly the same thing. See, we can't give you a special offer because it's free. There's nothing cheaper than free. But, but, you... We need you to send them a signal that you saw it on Windows Weekly. So go to Capterra.com slash Windows. They'll say, oh, we're going to, we like that Paul and Barry Joe show. We're going to, we're going to buy more ads there. Capterra, actually they do say that, by the way. Capterra.com slash Windows. We love Capterra. I know you will too. Capterra is software selection simplified. Capterra.com slash Windows. Now, Paul Therott begins our journey through the back of the book. <laughs> Jeez. Journey to the tip. Like Europe by the back door. Um, <laughs> not through the back door. Not by the back uh, door. <laughs> so uh, Microsoft this week announced a partnership with the Girl Scouts of USA, right? So it's, I guess it's not the Girl Scouts of America anymore. <laughs> but uh, And if you have a daughter that is in the Girl Scouts, you might want to bring her to the local Microsoft store because they now have workshops to get, I think it's four or maybe I guess it's four five STEM badges, uh, one each in computer expertise, digital photography, movie making, and then two in robotics. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Really oh, neat. man, that is that is a new Girl Scouts. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. I know. It's really cool. So I, uh, my daughter is too old for this, but, <laughs> you know, oh, well, um, mm -hmm. pretty cool. So that's neat. Uh, and then it's, it's sort of a sub tip. I had mentioned earlier that the Project X Cloud thing is live, and if you're an Android or an iOS user, you may know that you can now play games on your iPhone or your iPad or whatever using an Xbox controller. Um, but of course, the thing you need for both of those is a clamp that could hold your phone to the Xbox controller. So the one that I got only cost ten bucks. It's a it's this thing, or you could Leo's get it on there, and so you kind of just clip that onto your. Um, Onto your controller, it goes Cheap. on and off very and easily. It works it's nice, works great, and um, it's, it doesn't it's, cover up the uh, the it, little USB port, which is nice. It's the Dane Slef, which is yeah, ten bucks. D A I N S L E F, right? And you can see that little metal clip in the back, which is crucial because when the the weight of the phone is on the top of this thing, oh yeah, it would top you know topple over, but that keeps it standing nice. up. Uh, of course, you're going to hold it when you play, but I mean, it's and it fits basically any smartphone. I have the biggest smartphones you can get; it fits those no problem. So, it works with everything I have in here. Yeah, there's the little guy. If you, oh, neat. You know, clip there. I like you know, your so uh, mint sits. green controller. Yeah, it's personalized. I don't know if you can see that, but oh, yeah. little names on oh what a pro! <laughs> uh, Actually, yeah, Dane so that, that's Slef worked out makes great. A lot of stuff. They're uh, like a game. Yeah. Game accessory yep. company this thing arrives in this tiny little pack little box it's like the smallest thing in the world it's really neat huh. you can see actually you can see the box right there I don't know who, yeah. and then uh two app picks um this i just noticed this this week if you use one note for windows 10 especially if you would use the desktop version of the app or if you use the desktop version of any other office app one of the things you will have been bitten by which is something that makes me insane because you know we do the show notes for example so I go over to my website or Mary Jo's website and I want to paste in the, the title of an article or the URL of an article. And it, it, when this app first came out, it would just paste in using whatever default paste thing was. And the only way you could change it was to right click in the notes and then laboriously like choose paste and then choose the, you know, the type of paste that you wanted. Uh, eventually they added a default paste option. In fact, I think that happened this past year. So I typically will want to paste in plain text. I changed mine to plain text. That way it doesn't script the formatting, whatever. But I just noticed this. I didn't see an announcement about this. If you paste in now, it brings up a little floating menu like you get in like on a real computer. It's like the way the desktop app used to work. So now you actually get, um, I forget what they call those things, like a quick tip or a, what was that thing called? Smart tag or something. It was kind of a name for it, but whatever it is, you actually get like a nice little pop-up window. So this a uh, store app now actually functions like a real full-featured desktop application, at least for cut and paste. So anyway, that's a neat thing. I just thought that was cool. You so know what else you should know neat? that. If you, 
they now have dark mode for OneNote on iOS. That's true, and so which I use exclusively pretty. because it doesn't light up my face when we're doing the show. And it's really pretty. It's nice. Yeah. Unlike dark mode on Windows 10. Um, the other thing that just happened today, which is really cool for me personally, because I bought a, a ton of content on Apple or on iTunes or whatever, is Apple today made the Apple TV app available on Roku. And um, to date, I've kept both devices out in my living room. I prefer to use the Roku because it's got that nice remote. But there are advantages to the Apple TV for sure, including the performance. But the big one is just the uh, the movie, uh, all the movies I purchased are available. So through Movies Anywhere, you can access about two-thirds of your movies through other services. But now you can just get the Apple TV app on your Roku. So obviously this year with Apple TV Plus coming out, they're making Apple TV available in more places. You're seeing it on smart TVs. I had kind of predicted when they made that announcement we would see it on Roku and Fire TV. And here's the Roku version. So that's neat. Like, I ran out at lunchtime and installed it. I was so excited. I but like hell is frozen uh, over. I never thought this would happen. Just so you know, it's not the it's not 100% of the experience. And so um, one of the things you don't get is the iTunes extras. Uh, those oh. are still Apple TV only. Oh, that's I know that's kind bad. of a problem. I, I actually really but, appreciate that because I used to love DVD extras. I and I thought, oh, they'll I never too. do these anymore. I watch that stuff all the time. Yeah. So that's not there. Maybe it will come someday. Um, and it's 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 movie and TV show only. But that's cool because if you bought any of that stuff, and you can buy on the device now too, uh, it's all there. That's neat. I think Apple, you know, Apple, well, I should say actually the Apple TV app, which would be on your iPhone or the Apple TV, right, is actually that's all it is, right? So you don't get all the stuff on an Apple TV. You don't get like Apple Podcasts and no, you, you know, don't whatever get arcade else. either. Yeah, you don't get that stuff. Uh, but you do. It's movies and TV shows, and I got to tell you, for me personally, I mean, th this this means I'll never have to turn on my Apple TV again, basically ever, unless I want to watch iTunes extras. So, God love them. So, <laughs> whatever they did, it, it's great. So that's good. Nice. Yeah, that's exciting. Now, Thanks. Mary Jo Foley with her enterprise tip of the week. My enterprise tip is about a service called Desktop Analytics used to be called Windows Analytics, if you've heard of that. Um, when you take Desktop Analytics and combine it with Configuration Manager, it lets you do some really cool things if you're a business customer. You can create an inventory of all the apps running in your org. You can see the app compatibility or incompatibility with new feature updates to Windows 10 with those apps. Um, and get suggestions for what you could do to make your app compatible. So that's pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, the only people who can use this are people who have subscriptions to Windows 10 Enterprise E3, E5, or Microsoft 365, F1, E3, E5, or Education A3, A5. I've had people say, "What? wait, I, I'm not one of those people who subscribe. And I'm like, yeah, they haven't said they're going to bring it to other users, but maybe, maybe one day. But as of today... It's generally available and is starting to roll out. Awesome. Awesome. Code name of the week. This is a code name related to Ignite. Um, the code name is Hydra. The person who found this code name is the walking cat, of course. Earlier this week, he's like, what is Hydra? And then he said, it's something called the open applications model, whatever that is. Today, we found out what op open applications model is. It is a new open source spec that Microsoft and Alibaba developed together of all partners. <laughs> and it's all about making it easier for developers who write cloud native apps and distributed cloud, cloud native apps to do their job. Um, we know very little about this so far. You can go read a lot about it on GitHub. There are links all over the place to what they have going with GitHub. Um, at this point, it's an alpha stage. But Mark Rusinovich, again, the CTO of Azure, said he is going to be talking a lot more about this at Ignite and explaining how it fits in with some of the other platform as a service pieces that Microsoft currently has, things like Service Fabric and the Azure Kubernetes service. So if you're somebody who cares about Kubernetes and developing cloud apps, you are going to want to follow OAM. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The open uh, application model. Oh. <laughs> and just a, a little plug for uh, our sponsor. I think Microsoft Mechanics Rusinovich is going to be speaking 
uh, for yep. mechanics. There's going to be a lot of mechanics stuff at Ignite too. I yeah, they're going to be doing a lot. It I know like they're, so they're doing these. Fun. They're going to be recording live sessions, Microsoft yeah. Mechanics, at, at um, with the different speakers. So they're going to get Rasinovich talking about all this stuff and have a video. Oh man, I would love to meet Rasinovich. He is he's great. He's an interesting guy. Yeah, yep. he is. Very big score for Microsoft to get him and Miguel. They, yeah, they've done well. Yep. All right, it's time for beer. It's time for beer. And I've done some picks from these guys before. Uh, Evil Twin Brewing, based in Brooklyn. They finally opened their tap room in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I went this weekend. The thing to know about Evil Twin is they make great beer, but also their beer names are really long <laughs> and often hilarious. <laughs> Uh, one of the beers I had this weekend was called These Drinks Are So Expensive, Do I Have to Tip? That's the name of the beer. <laughs> I'd like a bartender. I'd like a These Drinks Are So Expensive, Do I Have to Tip? Yep. And That's then I ordered. Hard to why, order. Then I ordered, Why don't we just take the subway to JFK instead? And the guy goes, What? And I said, The subway JFK beer. And he's like, Oh, yeah, gotcha. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> but the beer I'm choosing today from Evil Twin is called The Sour IPA is Dead. Long live the Sour IPA. <laughs> and this beer is delicious. Um, it's made with raspberries and dragon fruit, but also with nutmeg and cinnamon. So when you what? think of those together, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> but it tastes delicious. It's 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 like a dessert, but it's not that sweet. And I, you know what? This must be a new trend in beers because I've been having a lot of pink sour beers lately that have these things called baking spices, like allspice, cinnamon, nutmeg. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it really works somehow. It sounds terrible when you just hear it, but it actually is delicious. This so if you see any sour beers with things like cinnamon and nutmeg, give it a try. Beer really is cooking, isn't it? It pretty much is. Yeah. Yep. Instead mm. of baking it, though, you let it ferment. Exactly. Yeah. It's chemistry. It's chemistry. It is. Well, totally chemistry. Is. I mean, always been. Yep. Cooking's always been chemistry. In fact, one of my favorite cookbooks is, I think it's called Cooking Chemistry or something like that. Mm. It's, it's a wonderful mm. cookbook. because It's, it's about not the Nathan Mirvold 1100 no. page <laughs> treatise. No. Yeah. I am not a Nathan Gastronomical M you. Mirvold <laughs> fan. Can I just say you don't like insane cackling geniuses? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just don't like That's his weird. patent trolling. I'm yeah, right, there's, that there's a too. number of things, and honestly, there's starting to be some ethical problems. Out. There. Yeah, that I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm not going to say because I don't want to. I don't know, but it's starting to sure. be some stuff coming out about this whole thing. Yeah. That, uh, it's not, yeah. 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 Not savory, shall we say? <laughs> yes. But that beer sure sounds savory. <laughs> it is. It's very delicious. <laughs> Paul Thorada, Mary Jo Foley, you've done it again. You've created a fabulous episode. Talk about chemistry. Wow. Look at you. You're just pulling it all together. Mm, this is he like is. when oxygen meets sodium and bursts into flame. It's an incandescent uh. refulgence. It's tech intensity. I have powdered water and I don't know what to add. <laughs> Spreading. Yeah, just add water. That's a, that's, what's his name? I love Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. Stephen mm -hmm. Wright. Love him. The great Boston comic, Stephen mm -hmm. Wright. I have powdered water and I don't know what I've to add. I've seen him live so many times. I've seen him live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I don't know See? what to say to that, Paul. I know. I follow him around the country. <laughs> it's like a deadhead. Mm -hmm. Except instead of wearing patchouli, they wear flop sweat. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. Mary Jo Foley's at all about Microsoft.com, her ZDNet blog. You can read her there. I mean, she files all the time, like several times a day, but has the best sources. Great stuff there. A must read, frankly. Uh, Paul Thorat, well, he's a must read as well. In fact, I suggest getting the premium version at Thorat.com. I know I enjoy it, especially these. Uh, this series you've been doing on programming windows and stuff. I just love the premium stuff. You're smart. That that makes me pay for it because I want, you know, because wow. I want that stuff. It's I can't great. promise that I'm smart, but I appreciate you oh, paying for it, I guess. He is smart. <laughs> that was smart, smart. Uh, his books are at leanpub.com. In fact, the field guide for Windows 10 now up to date through 1909. Mm -hmm. It's true. Leanpub.com. Don't forget, they still have some posters, I hope, because those are great, too. When you buy the yeah. book, get the posters of windows and stuff. It's Oh, they're so good. F -f Worthy of framing. We do yeah. the show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC. 
Uh, Micah, I think Micah Sarge is going to host next week, but with any luck, he'll have a blue suede laptop to show you. <laughs> Love it. It does say they'll deliver Tuesday, so I'm excited. I'm excited. Yep. Shouldn't we have a new insider build right now? Isn't that how that usually works? Yeah, right now. Right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right now. <laughs> oh, and next next Wednesday, right after Windows Weekly, we have Microsoft mm-hmm. Earnings. Ah, right. okay. Yeah, yeah. ill timed as usual. Yeah, they always yeah. do that. They because they do it at the market close and uh, yeah. happens to all of our shows, and it's just life. But that's fine. We'll yeah. co- you'll cover it again with Micah the following week. I'm going to be gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, for yeah, the how next long are you actually going to be gone? Like three, and four that, weeks? Yeah, or? it's a 25 day trip. So yikes! Uh, yikes! Oh. I won't be back till uh, November 19th. With <laughs> or, I'm sorry, November 20th for this show, and right. then, well, I guess we'll do a show on the day before Thanksgiving. I guess we will. So the twenty seventh. Sorry, unless you unless you guys are going to be gone. I know Mary Jo, you'll yeah, probably we'll, go to your sister's and I'll be in Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I've Maybe done it from it there here. before. Yeah, no, we're <laughs> great. Um, so yeah, so I'll be gone. Uh, Ignite is again what day? Uh, November. For us, it's the sixth. Sixth. So yeah. we'll do. We'll cover uh, the Ignite keynote. We'll probably stream that early in the morning. Mary Jo, yeah, but Paul's for the summary. fourth. Yeah, the so the, the, sorry, the oh, keynote fourth. is on the fourth, but and our, then your our, show will be on the, the Wednesday sixth, of that week. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. And uh, again, I, I won't be here, so I apologize, but I'll be listening on the boat. Yeah, I'm sure you will. <laughs> 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 no, that yeah. scenery is beautiful. Hold on. There's an Ignite keynote I have to watch live. Hold on. There's some tech intensity right now. It's like I, a 17 hour time difference, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so it's it's probably closer to, what, seven? Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. It's 11 hours. 11 for you. So it's that, exactly yeah, so the worst yeah. possible. You know, it's oh, almost wow. completely right. flipped. Rough. It's literally almost the other side of the yeah. planet. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's right now it's midnight there. Right. Oh, well. <sighs> well, who knows? Maybe you'll be, uh, you know, insomniac that night and, and well, need something to. November 4th is a sea day. So we're sailing down the Red Sea. I don't have anything else to do. I probably will. <laughs> if I can get internet, I don't think I'll be able to get internet. But if I can, Boy. I will be mm-hmm. listening because it literally. There's that nothing camel running in a circle so you can get the internet going. <laughs> we have we have four C days in a row. That's a long stretch of nothing. From yeah. where to where? Down the Red Sea, <clears throat> from uh, the, the Valley of the Kings, from Luxor. Yeah. Down oh, to uh, Oman. Uh, uh, You'll be eating actually, at the sorry, seven restaurants. Five C days. <laughs> I will be. Yeah. I will be. I'll be. I'm going. We're going one by one through all the restaurants <laughs> and then lapping, going back again. Yeah, nice. Uh, I'll be back like Jabba the Hutt. Hello, Paul and Mary Jo. You only live once. Enjoy it. Yeah, that might be the end of it, too. Yeah, well. <laughs> <Not only, laughs> sure. Uh, he died happy with, mm-hmm. with croissant crumbs with the on his falafel in the corner of his mouth. With falafel in his With hummus. <laughs> he was bathed in hummus. Is that, is that yeah. falafel? I love hummus. I love oh. hummus. Yeah. And I love falafel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The chickpea. Is there anything you can't do with it? Um, thank you, guys. I'm sorry I'm not going to see you for a month, but uh, yeah, have fun. Amazing. We'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Everything could be different next month. Sure. Probably won't be, but okay. we can hope. <laughs> At the very least, you'll be very tan. <laughs> I will be tan. Mm-hmm. We do this show uh, on Tuesdays, as I mentioned. You can watch live at twit.tv slash live. Did I say Tuesdays? I meant Wednesdays. At 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, 2030 UTC. No, that's wrong, but it doesn't matter because I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm gone. I don't care. <laughs> you don't care. You're I already in a mental state of being. <laughs> do not care what time UTC. Uh, <laughs> I see. That's how I've always kind of felt about it. It's nice to see you come around. <laughs> uh, I'll be I'll be almost in UTC, so I I do care. <laughs> yep. You're from Belgium. You care, right? We have visitors from Belgium. They care. They, yeah. they like to know what it's going to be in Belgium. We got a guy here. He's from, from Melbourne, Australia. He likes to know. He can do the math. Plus 11, minus 12, carry the one, and you got something. Yeah, Leo, we're, we're Americans. We don't do math. We <laughs> it's just you got to shovel it. Are we the last it, you know? country still using miles, feet, pounds? Yeah, mm-hmm. no one else. There is no I'm one also else. Also the only country that has put a man on the moon, just saying. Okay. And by the way... <laughs> so- he measured that jump. What one small step in man? That was measuring a feet, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, none of this meters crap. Yeah, I think the metric system is a fad. I'm gonna say it. 
<laughs> if you're watching live, join the chat room at irc.twit.tv. If you're not watching live, you can always get the show after the fact, twit.tv slash www. That's the website. Or uh, subscribe in your favorite podcast application. That way you'll get it automatically. You don't even have to think about it. And for, don't forget, Mary Jo and Paul are both in our brand new community forums. We love seeing you in there. For those people who can't be chatting live, uh, this is a way that you can interact with the show at your leisure. It's easy to find twit.community. Twit.community. Thank you, everybody. And I, I will go at least go in the forums, and I'll try to be listening live uh, as much as I can uh, on my trip. We'll see you next time in about a month. Paul and Mary Jo. Have fun. On Windows yeah, Weekly. Have a great time. Blah, blah.